Welcome to the third installment of the Knights of Everflame, a special eight-part adventure to celebrate the launch of Pathfinder 2nd Edition. I'm Jason Bullman, Director of Game Design at Paizo and one of the lead designers behind the game. I'll be your host and Game Master for this session, but before we get started, let's go around the table and meet our cast. Hey, 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 Jeremy Stephen Walker. Hello, I'm Gina DeVivo. Hi, I'm Aki. Hey, I'm Erica Fermina. Hi, I'm Rachel Seeley. All right, and now that we know everybody, let's uh, let's get started. <laughs> when we last left our intrepid band of adventurers, six would-be soldiers were being shipped off to Last Wall. Well, five and lucky. Uh, <laughs> we're being shipped up to Last Wall to serve in the Last Wall Army. You were being escorted there by Lieutenant Ellisend and Private Carr, uh, who made sure to try and educate you as best they could as you made your way up to Castle Everstand. However, upon arriving there, you found the castle in flames, the village below in panic. The entire scene was a disaster. You made your way to the center of town only to find it overrun with undead, the streets literally running with blood. There, a bunch of zombies and skeletons were assaulting the church at the center of town, a shrine to Iomide. You fought off those undead, cutting them limb from limb in some cases, and made your way up to the shrine. The doors were flung open, and inside you found the remnants of Squire Stone's population. A handful of refugees is all that was left. Led by Sir Falmer, an aged priest who was losing his sight, you were given a task. The lieutenant pulled you aside and made you swear the oaths of Last Wall. She made you knights, and she gave you but one command. Escort these people to safety. Take them back to where Cap or Lieutenant Ellison was born, in the small town of Casson, across the border, out of Lastwall. Get them out. Lastwall has fallen. These people have to find safety. With that noble charge, uh, Lieutenant Ellison and Private Carr left you. They went to the castle to fulfill their duties, to fulfill their oaths, leaving you with 20-some... Uh, scared and terrified villagers to escort south to safety. For the next three days, you made your way south, evading undead forces that poured out of the city like angry, rotting ants. They chased you across the countryside, but you managed to evade them. Through clever use of tactics, hiding in the forest, covering your tracks, using spells to make it so that you could travel faster, the group managed to make relatively decent time. That doesn't mean your journey wasn't without peril. You ran into a hunter's outpost that was filled with ghouls, ghasts, horrible undead things that feast on the flesh of the living. You defeated them and managed to get supplies. You continued to push south only to find a hunter's shack. Unfortunately, its resident was a werewolf who came hunting you in the night thanks to a uh, pointed message uh, telling the werewolf where you were. <laughs> it's very useful, it was great. That, that went that went super, uh, and uh, <laughs> and no, it's fine. <laughs> if friendly, come help. Yeah, he did. He came to help himself to all of your tasty meat, uh, and from there you continued to push south, fleeing from the undead force that was apparently hot on your heels. Although you had not seen them in over a day, they kept triggering alarms uh, several hours behind you. So. Uh, at this point in time, though, you think you may have finally lost them, although you can't possibly be sure the undead may be coming. Then, finally camping, the town of Kassen, just over the, uh, on the near horizon, you could see pleasant, thin, wood fire smoke uh, coming up from the pleasant, the pleasant forested town. Uh, you camped one last time before the final push, but in the middle of the night, you were betrayed. Lucky. Your wagon lit a fire, your supplies ruined, some of them stolen. And when you looked around in the, in, the, in the ruins of your campsite, the ruins of your wagon, Lucky was gone. He's about to be real unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we are going to pick up shortly thereafter. You have continued uh, throughout the morning with nothing else to do, uh, Lucky's trail, you did manage to pick it up in the morning and kind of look for it, but it, it, it got quickly lost in the forest. He, he deliberately went off the path into the deep woods, and, and after not more than five minutes, 
uh, you found that you had no idea what direction he went. Um, in fact, he may have actually doubled back to throw you off the trail. You're not sure. He's nowhere to be seen. <clears throat> he will not be the last he has seen of me. Or me. To uh, recap who's all with you, it's the, it's the five of you. You are traveling with Sir Falmer, the priest of Iombade, the aging priest in his ill-fitting mail, his sword that he can barely lift, and his eyes that are failing him. Uh, but he's still brave. He's still ready to fight. Uh, he just, you just need to point him at the bad guys, and he'll take care of it. Um, you're also traveling with Private Unkir, a young half-orc woman who was apparently knighted no more than about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, uh, and is quite unsteady about all this, but is here to serve and has been ordered to help these people get to safety. Um, but is a bit shaken after what has happened. And then uh, you're also traveling with uh, about 23 refugees, uh, farmers, cobblers, you know, there's a brewer. There's, it's, it's a small group of folk, all of whom are terrified and looking to you for guidance. As the dawn breaks, you are able to pack up your camp and continue your trek south. Uh, you have all had a chance to prepare, uh, you know, ready yourself, do your morning prayers and rituals. Uh, so if any of you wanted to swap out spells or anything like that, you are able to do so. Um, I don't know if you want to do anything about that right away or, or wait a bit, but. I want to do it now. Or you're just going to do it now. Oh, we're getting that right now. All right, so you, you finish your <laughs> prayers immediately and, uh, and then what? Um, Linnaeus is just furiously praying, like, if there's ever a time that you would come and help us, now would be the time. We are in desperate need. No? Okay, that's fine. Uh, and then she goes immediately to Oculus, and she's like, hey, uh, can I look at your wound? Sure. Okay. She's going to spend some time looking it over. All right, so last night in the <clears throat> fight uh, against the, uh, the werewolf, mm -hmm. Um, actually, that was now two nights ago, now that I yeah. think about it. Um, you uh, were bit, mm -hmm. and you haven't suffered any ill effects yet, but uh, you're, you're not sure about whether or not you might in the future. So go ahead and give me a uh, medicine check and a religion check. Okay. Give me both of those as you examine his wounds. I'm going to start off then by taking, she has this bucket with her, it's a little bucket, that has a lid. It is a bucket. Um, a tiny little bucket. Tiny little bucket. She pulls out a little stick of incense and she pulls out um, a thurible and she sticks it in. She lights it up. She sets it down in front of her and this like vaguely yellow tinted smoke starts to come out from it. Um, and then I get a bonus to my religion checks. <laughs> she needs incense when yeah. she looks at wounds. It's important. Oh, right. I do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Rituals are important. And Iculus is just like, okay, what is... It's not going to hurt, you have promised. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, medicine check. This is some good incense. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> not really, though. Am I supposed to feel this way? <laughs> uh, no, you're fine. It's not a drug. It feels good. Good. Oh, that's the light of serenity. Oh. <laughs> Uh, 31 for medicine. <laughs> 31 for medicine. All right, so looking at the wound, you can tell that it's healing nicely. It doesn't look like it's going to fester. Mm -hmm. um, you've been healed of most of the damage, so all that's left is kind of a red spot now okay. at this point where the, where the wound is getting better. You don't see any signs of infection at all. You think he might be in the clear. What was your religion check? Um, 23. So you're not sure, but you are a little worried. The, the infection may not be what you have to worry about. Those who are bit by werewolves are actually afflicted by a curse, uh, not a disease. It is yeah. different. Lycanthropy is a curse. It transforms you into a bloodthirsty creature on the full moon. But you can't quite be sure if he's cursed without using more magic. Do I know how to remove this curse, or who would know how to remove it? Well, there are magics that can attempt to break curses. Those, there are powerful magics. Um, but you would need to ascertain if he is indeed curse first, cursed first. Um, <laughs> making it hard on myself. All right, uh, but you can, you can probably get a sense of that with your more powerful detect magic. Oh, okay, yeah. then I'm gonna mm. go ahead and use that, because I'm 
I swapped out a spell for Detect Magic. All right. Just earlier. Perfect. So Where the thing about Detect Magic is you're able to kind of, once you know who you're traveling with and you know what magical auras are around them, you can kind of exclude those from it to just look for new things. Okay. So you can use it as a cantrip. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you, you can cast it as often as you like. Uh, and you use Detect Magic and you get no auras of uh, around him. So you think he might be in the clear. He might have resisted it. You're fine. Don't worry. What about this one? I mean, I mean, <laughs> if if on the next full moon you suddenly are like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if that is the case, then we will take care of it. No. <laughs> what do you mean by take take care of? Yeah, don't worry. Cross <laughs> that bridge when we come to it. Mm -hmm. No, it's fine. It's we'll fine. we'll burn that bridge when we we'll come. Take to it. All right, you know, cross it and then burn it. I also want to <laughs> look at this one. That is exactly what she we was bit as well. Up. So <laughs> that's really interesting. You wake up this morning and you don't feel so good. Could you give me another fortitude save? Oh no! Oh. No, no. Oh, gosh, no. which one was the good one? <laughs> oh, that's super fast. Oh, are you okay? Not even a number. <gasps> Take this <laughs> <laughs> Not you. Already. Was the orange one last and you. Yeah. Dice jail, please. Dice jail. You Dice stay jail. in Saren Ray. You. 19? 19. Ooh. Oh, for a moment there, you're like, mm, do we have any more of that elk left? You're really hungry for raw elk. Do they have raw elk left? Raw would be best. But you managed to kind of shake it off. You still don't feel good. But you're 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 not you're you're not you're not overcome with hunger right now. I don't like it. I'm gonna detect magic on her. Oh, yeah. That wouldn't detect a disease. Oh, then I'm just gonna use my remove disease. Oh, all right. Hey. <laughs> oh, well. All right. <laughs> oh, oh well. Well, in that case, instead of just disease, watching her suffer, I guess I'll I just solve it. All right. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye. It's all right. Done. So the way this That's is going to work. It. The way this is going to work is you're going to cast the spell and you're going to make a counteract check. So all that is, is you're going to roll uh, a d20 and add your spell attack roll. Oh, okay. Um, and you're trying to beat the DC of the disease, and that's it. What's it's the real DC? simple. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> all right. It's a number. I think this one was helpful for me before. No, it's oh, not. Guess what I'm gonna do, bye. Oh, the hero points are being spent in them. Very early oh! today. Nice. 30. 30. Very 30. Nice. You call upon uh, Sanrei's healing magic and, and you, you let it flow uh, through Tariel. And uh, once, once the magic has passed through you, you feel absolutely fine. Well, that was weird. You better. <laughs> All right. I don't want raw meat do anymore. You. Good. That's a good start. So <laughs> the <laughs> refugees have packed up. Delicacy. They are looking to all of you to, to kind of point the way, um, but uh, the wagon is destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the fire burnt out the back wheels, and now the, the but horses the horse would just be... Case, so that is all that yeah, the horses would just be dragging it, so that's not going to work. Aculus almost is sort of all morning has been writing notes all over the ground. Just, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, maybe we'll need this, then mm. we'll go there, we'll recruit there, don't leave any more notes for werewolves, that sort of thing. Yeah, I got it. Uh, <laughs> just lots notes. of lot of notes. Occasionally a, a like a, an animal will skitter through and erase stuff. It's been an it's been a havoc. But I've got a couple of things. So we're out of we're out of cart and um uh, uh, sorry, I'm speaking quite fast, aren't I? No, I okay, so, so right. Um, can you help me make some... So we still got the sick and the wounded. I they can can't be you. walking. So do, can you help me make a couple of... um da, 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 da. Little barrels? Sure. That seems well, difficult. I'm very good but, at crafting, uh, so I can do this. Yeah, so am I. Does anyone else want to help make some of, some of these I mean, plants? I can... I don't know what to I can help Gurneys. I can Sled? Sleds. Summon Sledges? another steed Sledge? if we need. Like, a sort of thing to drag a body. Had a knife body. How many sick and wounded do we have? Uh, you only have about four people who would really kind of slow you down. Like a trolley. Uh, three of which are elderly and one that person works. just and has a has a. Just something for him. But isn't a cousin can, like right it? over there? Sure, but we still got to go through a go bunch of woods. I don't want to be carrying them all on my back. You, we're, you, we're at the top. Of you the are, you are about, probably about a three hour walk to Castle. Okay. Yeah. Well, if we put them on the horses and I get another horse. Well, we do have a couple of these. That would that, probably that would sad. probably work, actually. Yeah. I have a horse. I'll just, I'll just. How are you going to find another horse? Oh, I'll, we I'll only. Just, we, what magic? Lord, you run away. <laughs> oh, she's magic. I can summon one. Yeah. <gasps> what? Yeah. You want to summon a horse? I saw it once, a while ago. When? 
When did you summon? Is it like a real horse or is it like a magic horse? Uh, it's a magic, magic horse. No magic way. Horse. Can you, you can ride a magic horse? Yeah. yeah. What's it made of? Magic. Magic <laughs> horse? <laughs> I, I can't quite do that. Oh. But Why'd you let me hitch one. myself to the trolley if you <laughs> yeah. could make another horse? You did it so quick, yeah. I couldn't, you just did yeah. it. I mean, I, I had no idea that's what was happening. I was in the wagon. I pulled out my back. I was in the wagon. All right. Wait, no, so, I didn't feel that. <laughs> to, to, to keep things moving along, you're able to uh, summon up a, a phantom steed. Yes. All right. So this horse just kind of appears out of thin air and it's like proud and noble and like very obedient. And the two draft horses are kind of looking at it like, mm, I don't know what that <laughs> thing is. Uh, but you're able to, to kind of load the, the, the sick and the, the, and the wounded kind of onto those horses and, and make your way south. As a, as a picture <clears throat> note, it is clearly phantasmal in nature. Yeah, exactly. it's too yeah. perfect. Please. It's like too okay, nice please. of a horse. Um, it's like it's like, like it's like, yeah, like there's wind that's blowing its mane, even though there isn't any wind. It's just too nice. Um, so, uh, so you're able to gather everyone up and continue the push to Cassin. About three hours later, you come down a hill, break through a line of trees, and there, not a hundred feet in front of you, is the wooden wall that leads to Cassin. There's a small sign kind of dangling in the breeze that says Cassin. You've arrived at your destination. Okay. And the gates are closed. Uh, uh, this is a bit of a pickle, is it not? There is, yeah. a, <laughs> there is a guard tower on one side of the gate. It's not on both sides, it's just on one side. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, uh, as you approach, there's uh, kind of a, a, a guard who looks like he was sitting on a chair, just mm -hmm. taking it easy. Um, he had his feet up. You could see his feet <laughs> kind of over the palisade. And uh, as you approach, he kind of leans forward and you see him almost fall back in his chair and he kind of hops up and he's like, Hello? Who, who Hello. goes there? Uh, he calls nice out. The last wall. We were sent by, um, the by Lieutenant Ellison. Ellison. Lieutenant Ellison. We'd like to find her father. We have been tasked with uh, making sure these refugees from last while are safely delivered to the he, city of Cassin. He looks at you. Colvin's girl. Colvin? Oh, Colvin. 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 Yes, that's Colvin. him. Um, we have dire news. We must be let in now. He kind of looks out at you and he says, I'll, I'll have to go fetch the mayor. Dire news. Last wall has fallen. Dire. He's like, what? You, you see him like run down and and you hear kind of you know the 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 wooden bar being moved and then the gate swings open and he's like well get get in here then I, perfect thank you we um, have arrived all of you who are tired and weary yeah. from travel we have arrived he's like uh, uh, uh follow me i'll i'll go fetch the mayor <laughs> also he, definitely close that gate once we're all in uh, uh, well, all, all, all right. And uh, uh, he lets all of you through and he, he kind of closes up the gate. And mind you, this, this town is surrounded by um, a, a really simple wooden wall. And by that, I mean, it's basically logs that have been sharpened uh, and tipped up on end. So it's a, it's a palisade. It's not a proper like stone wall or anything, but it is a wood wall. And uh, uh, the gate though is really just kind of like flimsy boards strapped together um, oh. and he closes it and lowers like, in essence, just like a two by four across it and is like, is secure. And then he goes, he goes, he goes secure. running off into town. He's like, well, oh, follow me, follow me. It's like, and as you begin to make your way into town, more and more people start coming out of their house because this giant group of travelers has just arrived. And to be honest, you all look like you've been through some pretty tough times. Uh, the, the townsfolk are all caked in mud. Nothing to see here. Yeah, uh, you're all kind of dirty and, and have been on the road and running for your lives for three days. So you're able to uh, go through the town and, and you can see the map of Cassin here uh, in the middle of the table. Uh, so you cross through that north gate on the north side of the map there. And uh, uh, after, you know, not a short way, uh, you reach a bridge that uh, crosses over a river. And he's like, come on, this way. And he kind of hops over the, he starts walking over the bridge. Is this the Turandel River? 
Oh yeah, this is her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is lifeblood of the town. As if he's like now a tour guide. He's like, this is this is how we get all of our our goods in and out of town. Where uh, Cassin is renowned for its its fabulous woodworking. Sir. We have many sculptors Sir. and crafters. Dyer. Did I right. not say Dyer? Right. And he uh, he kind of continues escorting you uh, into town. Lydia's so he crawls sculptors. over the bridge like <laughs> sculptors, <laughs> woodworkers. Yes, yes. We make fine furniture no, and crafts, and oh, yes, it's yeah. yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, and he takes you uh, across the bridge and to the center of town. And he's like, if if you'll wait here, I'll, I'll go fetch the mayor. He's probably in his chambers. And he goes running into that building right there in the middle on the water. And uh, above it, it just says. Uh, a hall. <laughs> um, and it's so, comprehensive. just hall, oh, hall, I hall, H A L L. That's just what it says above it. Nothing special. It just says hall. Quick and to um, the point. Like so, <laughs> you're able to kind of get a look around, and directly across from the hall, the town hall, uh, is is a temple, or well, calling it a temple is a bit grandiose. It's more of a, a large church. It has uh, smack dab in the middle. It has the symbol of Aristil, god of like hunting and communities. It's usually a very rural deity. It's a, it's a, he, he's a god of families and Aristotle. hunting. Yeah, so his symbol is like a bow uh, with arrows. But beneath it, arrayed around it, are a bunch of other holy symbols that aren't as big, but it looks like this is kind of a multi-denominational church. So there's like a symbol of Iomidae and a symbol of Shellen and a symbol of Sarenrae and Ooh. a symbol of Gazray. And so there, there's a bunch of different l l deities whose symbols are also there. Weren't um, you the one who said Daya? I'm, I'm running into the yeah. temple. <laughs> yeah. So uh, th uh, next to that, it looks like there's a shop that sells like uh, armor and weapons. It, it's called Rennet Steel. And uh, next to that is the only inn you've seen in town, and it's a place called the Seven Silvers. I wonder as, if that's how much it costs for your night. As you're, uh, <laughs> as you're standing there, you, you, you get a, a lay of the land. So a few moments later, uh, the doors to the hall burst open, and, a, a, you know, a, a thin, uh, wiry man comes out. He's, uh, he's wearing um, kind of a ceremonial vestment um, that has like badges sewn to the, the 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 collar that goes down around the front, and the badges show things like lumber and like a chair and a spoon and like a, a, a wooden bird sculpture. It almost looked like it looked like woodworking merit badges or something, and uh, and yeah. he's. He's a he's a very thin, wiry man with a, a like hawkish nose. Kind of kind of uh, his hair is is black and pulled back tightly, uh, giving him the overall impression of kind of like a a, a, a vulture. And uh, he just uh, he just kind of comes out and he goes. So what's all this? Who are, who are all of you who've come to my town? I, I'm 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 uh, I'm Mayor Ventner. Who are you? We have been sent by Lieutenant Ellison to protect these uh, these refugees, they, the- uh, Colvin's last... daughter? Yes. Isn't she up in Last Wall? It's fallen. What? It's fallen, it's last no wall, more. Fallen. Preposterous. Yeah. All of those knights? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> un undead knights. I'm just gonna gesture he to kind of... all of the town's people behind us. Off to the, uh, off to the, the, the east, the building that's next to the hall there looks like a, a, a watch station. It's Most of the buildings here are made of wood, but the watch station is made of stone, as is the church, by the way. Every other building looks like it's made of wood that you've seen so far, but the watch station is made of stone. And uh, coming out of the watch station is um, a kind of a portly middle-aged guard who looks like he's in charge. Uh, and he kind of comes up behind the mayor and just kind of sits there and is like, hey, mayor, what's, what's going on with all these these folk, who are they? And he's like, that's what I'm trying to find out. Hold your tongue. And he, he looks at all of, the mayor looks back to all of you. So you've, you've come here with, with all of these, these folk? Yes, we've been yeah. charged with this. We were sent here. Uh, all right, well, well, of course we'll see what we can do. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, Cassin is, is an open and friendly town. I see. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's go speak to the, uh, uh, to, to Father Prast. He's, he's a man of the cloth. I'm sure he can help. 
Meanwhile, <laughs> I'm already inside the church, um, you go kind of bursting in the doors, and uh, what you see is a very long uh, kind of uh, uh, shrine room, and at the far end is a uh, is a shrine dedicated to a rastal. But all the way up, there are like alcoves. Mm -hmm. And in each alcove, there is a smaller shrine dedicated to each of the other deities. So it looks like the people probably come here and offer up prayers to whatever deity they, mm -hmm. they venerate. Mm -hmm. um, and the moment you kind of come bursting in, uh, there is a man who is up at the shrine and he's currently talking to one of the fa farmers. And uh, when he sees you, he kind of looks up and he, he says, uh, just a moment, just a moment. And he kind of, he kind of uh, tells the farmer to wait. And he says, oh, my, my, my child, what, what troubles you? Why, why have, who are you and why have you come to the, the, the house, house, of, house of Arastal? Oh, um, my name is Linnaeus. Uh, I am a cleric of Saren, right? And, um, at that, his eyes kind of go wide as he looks at your general kind of raiment and, and, and look. And he's like, a, a child of the Dawnflower? Yes. Uh, she holds up her holy symbol. <laughs> blessed be by Serenray's light. You are, you are, you are one of her children. Yes. Uh, well, what can I do for you? I'm not entirely versed in all of her prayers, but uh, I do know, I do know some of the hymns. I, well, I came here to pray to her, but mostly to let you know you are in dire need and you are in dire danger. There's uh, what? around 200 undead coming from the last wall. What? Fallen. <laughs> he's like, he's like, C come with me, child. We must go speak with the mayor at once. Okay. And, and he kind of, he kind of rushes up to the front door. And, 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 and Father Prast, uh, he's, he's an older human man. Uh, he's going gray at the temples, but he's still in, in, in his prime. He's still mm. fit. Um, uh, any, uh, those of you who have some religious training automatically kind of just know that, mm -hmm. you know, the Arastal is all about hunting and things like that. So their priesthood, are, they stay fit and they're, they're outgoing woodsman type. Um, he looks no different, although he does look like he's kind of reached middle age. Mm -hmm. And he kind of, he kind of escorts you outside just as the rest of you are coming forward with the mayor. Oh, um, I'm gonna like touch the shrine, the shrine of Saren Ray before I leave. Just like, oh, sorry, bye. All right, uh, it is, it is of course uh, 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 located with a uh, with a window uh, facing east, so it mm. gets the morning sun, and uh, so it. yeah, it's uh, it still has some rays of light on it, and you're able to kind of uh, make your obeisance. All right, Mom. so you make your way outside, and. Um, uh, the mayor comes up and he says, Father Prast, we have a lot of refugees that need help. And Prast goes, of course, mayor, I, I would be happy to see to them. All are welcome in the shrine to a rustle. We appreciate your uh, hospitality. We understand that these are a lot of people, but they are in need of help and we were, we were commissioned to bring them here to you or more specifically to Coven. Coven, I believe, is his name. Mm -hmm. The father of... Uh, Lieutenant Edison. Ah, well, uh, uh, Colvin uh, lives out on the edge of town, but, but, but come, let's, let's bring these poor folk inside. They could use a shelter and a meal. Sure, and maybe there's somewhere where we can talk more privately away from the sort of innocent ears. I did tell him about the 200 undead. Oh, you oh, did? Great! Oh, so he knows. Right. The, the mayor is like... Yes, I'm sure it's all quite urgent. Well, Father, since no. you seem to have this taken care of, I'll we leave like it in your capable hands. A few days away from properly uh, we we were, this guy. This is the mayor. <laughs> oh, I don't know uh, this man. That's the mayor. There's 200 undead. No, I'm sure Does it is quite serious. Down? I'm okay. sure. So and I am going to go and take it to our town council right now. We were in chamber meetings. So I shall go and speak with the members of all the guilds, and I shall come and chat with you when our, when our meeting is concluded. Right, so we'll come with and we'll do the, the accounts and you know mm -hmm. what happened, right. and then you can evaluate the situation. You don't seem very concerned for 200 undead. More you than that. You have some kind of special defense here, because so far, your walls look very flammable and weak. And this church is the only stable building, I think. He looks at you. <laughs> Surely, we have last wall to protect us. It's and gone! Last wall has fallen! fallen. These people are from last wall! Last Talk to these refugees! They are like, they are like Castle Everstand has fallen, and they're, they're telling him this, and he's like, mm, that's an unfortunate event, and, and, and I will send my scouts out, and we will, we will have no, them investigate. Don't. Why Some do you not believe us? Out? 200 are dead! Us. He's I like, proof. I have proof. I grabbed that, that, that knight's 
sort of undead garb, the one that is buried. Do you have uh, uh, Lieutenant Ellison's personal I do. effects? I do. I have her things, That's but for they're father. for her father alone. Can I he, hold up the casting? He nasty looks at you and he mushy? says. He looks at you and he just says, "I shall be with you shortly. I am interrupting my meeting." You should be afraid. Hey, he'll he, interrupt he too. He turns you this, you and leaves. Done. I'm following him. I don't like the, sure. uh, Let's so. So the captain of the guard is there, and he's like, "Now, now." Council meetings in session. You're going to die in Do not knights. have an invitation. We are knights of last wall and we are coming to he, Yes, and you are now a near Mathos, and we don't have to recognize your authority here. Yeah? You're all horrible. I'm gonna go talk to the father. Okay. Yes, you should Can see you to your me? refugees. Can you show me a bite yeah. wound or something? And uh, he goes to go sit uh, in front of the door to the guild, uh, the town hall. The man's not going to um, I'm going to stand right in front of him. Mm-hmm. Just stand there. He's like he see he's staring at you, and he's kind of he sits down in a chair in front of the in front of the front door, and uh, he just kind of looks at you, and he's like, uh, you you know you gonna play that? <laughs> yes, I am. Um, I'm going make some bad <laughs> noises. <laughs> Uh, really loud. No, I'm going to cast Charm Person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing my. I'm farm. going to uh, slowly bring out my violin, and I'm going to stare him dead in the eyes, smile, and start to play and cast Charm Person. <laughs> All right. Um, charm. So uh, I'm assuming you're trying to kind of hide the fact that you're casting. Oh yeah, and I'm going yeah, to sure. use my. Um, Melodious spell, which hides the fact that I'm casting a spell. <laughs> but um, that's what I figured you were doing. All right, <laughs> uh, all right. So I'm gonna need to make a will save for that, and uh, you know, uh, uh, poor Captain <laughs> Rennet here is not exactly the most skilled at that, but we're gonna give it a try. Okay. Oh, the die is hot again today. No, no, no. no. twenty-six. <sighs> Fine. So for a moment, he's kind of like. Ah, and then he's like, hmm, and he kind of crosses his arm. So back over near the uh, the the shrine, the Father Prast is is escorting the refugees in, and as they each come in, he kind of looks at them, and he's kind of doing triage, mm-hmm. just being like, who needs help, who needs food, and he's kind of bringing them inside, and he has he has like uh, one or two like acolytes who are serving him, who immediately break out like. Uh, uh, like bedrolls and pillows and stuff, so people can sit down, and they immediately start handing out bread and 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 food. And one of them goes running off to the Seven Silvers to get more food and 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 consumables. And the the father is generally working with all of you to to get them all in here and and processed, um, uh, you know, or at least sorted. And um, can can everyone who's who's over there, um, just just give me a perception check. Over where? Over, th- over near the over near the shrine. So this would be everybody other than Tariel, who's kind of over near the hall trying to intimidate the <laughs> captain. <clears throat> Three. That would be a fifteen. Fifteen. Thirty. Th- Thirty. Twenty-seven. Twenty-six. Ah. Well, everyone notices this except for Icolus, <laughs> who's apparently that makes mask, mask makes it hard <laughs> for yeah, you to see. Yeah, really see much. Of and uh, over to one side, uh, kind of. Kind of off uh, between the church and uh, uh, another one of the the homes, kind of off to the side. You see uh, a man. He uh, he's kind of a, a big guy. He's got kind of a big bushy beard, and uh, it looks like it was kind of red, but it's gone gray. And he's wearing he's wearing like uh, a robes and a and a tunic and 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 a belt and uh, and. It, uh, but he, he kind of has a bit of a, a wild look about him. And uh, he's, uh, he's kind of looking at you, and he just goes, psst. 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 Do you need something? Are you he in just, trouble? He's kind of, he's, he's real obvious, to be honest, because he's a big guy. Like, I mean, he's not, and he's not very sneaky. And, and, and he's just kind of like, yeah, what you need? We, uh, I, I get Iculus's attention to, and there is someone over there trying to get our attention. Let's go. You, uh, are you going to be an ally for us? <laughs> you come up to him and ask him if he's an ally, and he's like, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't, maybe. Uh, did, I, did, I, so did I hear you say something about undead? Yes, we have yes. a little bit of undead. A What's wrong what? with being obvious? <laughs> and he kind of, he looks kind of, <laughs> Can we ask who it's you happening. are? Mm-hmm. 
What? Can we ask who you are? I'm 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 Uptal. I'm I'm Mayor Uptal. No, sorry, uh, ex Mayor Uptal. I'm not I'm not mayor anymore. I, I used to be mayor. I'm, I'm not mayor anymore though. What happened? What happened? Oh, that's a long story. It, it's years ago. Don't worry about oh, it. Don't worry about your it. Current mayor is incompetent. You've got you've well, the people. The, the people voted him. It's not my choice. I. I, I mean, I this tried to campaign, but but those kids died. So it. You uh, know, it no one was what, voting for me. What is oh, this oh. No, it was an accident. We sent him to. It's a long story. I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. So there's, there's, there's wait. a lot it's of things right now. Yeah, that's We're an awful not lot. exactly sure what you what it is that you want from us or why you are trying to get our attention. So speak plainly, man. No, I, be, I believe you. I heard. I heard what you were saying to the mayor. I, b- I believe you. I didn't believe people years ago, and it, look where it landed me. I'm, I'm not mayor anymore, and, and nobody listens to me at all. But, but I believe you. Will you help us rally the people? Well, I mean... Fight uh, up against this incompetent mayor. I mean, I mean, they don't really listen to me anymore, but, but you, could, you, could come, you could come talk to... to well, me and my, me and my friend. Who's you your could, friend? You could come talk to him. No, he lives, he lives on the edge of town. You want to come with me? We could, we could go talk Is to him. Is listened? No, oh. no. You know, you know, you know, Colvin. Colvin. Mm, yeah. We knew we know his daughter. daughter. He's he's a good man. I I like him. He he's nice to me. We knew his daughter. Oh. It is very possible that she has been taken by the undead. No, my my old my old friend. He he lives on the edge of town. He still listens to me, and 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 people listen to him because he's he's a powerful wizard. What? Oh. That's good. We need powerful allies in here to rally the people. Wizard. Oh, his his name's Holgast. You want to go meet him? Holgast. Yeah. That's a great name. I would love to. Hang okay. on. I want to go tell Father Prest. Hang on. I'll be back. I sure. run back right. over. I'm like, Father Prest, do you know anything, <coughs> you know anything about a man in the woods called Holgast? <coughs> He's like, oh, old, old man old man Holgast. Yeah, yeah, no. He lives in the crooked tower over on the edge of town. Is he a wizard? Uh, yeah. I mean, when he remembers to prepare his spells, it's not every morning. Oh, dear. Okay, uh, he is uh, he is a uh, he is a uh, he, uh, he is a fine and capable m- member of the community. If he is a bit forgetful, okay. w- what about the uh, never attends church though? It's oh, terrible. how dare! Iculus comes. No, I try. Iculus mm-hmm. walks up and. Well, what about the former mayor? Ah, poor, poor, poor Jonark. Yes, poor Jonark. He's he's not what he used to be. Mm, no, not since, not since the events of of oh seven. What what is What's that? happened in 07? Is it something about kids? Uh, yeah, back back in the early days of Cassin, we used to have a, a ritual that we would do every few years where we would send some young folk on an adventure. We would, it was all a it was all a joke. We would send them to a dungeon nearby and we would prepare it with fake traps and and the pits were filled with pillows. It was ridiculous. Uh, but one year we we sent a, a group of young folk to retrieve the Everflame. That's that was their goal, to retrieve the Everflame and bring it back to town. Well, and it, it it's just a, a magical fire. It's, it's it was part of our it was part of our autumn ritual. And we would send them there. It was it was a coming of age. Ritual. You would haze your fellow young folk. Children. Well, we wanted to make them adventurers. It was all in good fun. Pits full of pillows. They don't sound that bad. No, no one ever got hurt. Until they did. What happened? Everything is always fun until somebody gets hurt. We had no idea that there was a, a malevolent evil that lived there. Um, the, the, the children we sent managed to deal with it. They put it back into its grave. It's, it's gone now. What was this evil thing? Oh, I don't rightly know. Uh, Mayor Uptal might. But uh, unfortunately, later that year, there was an election. And well, after a bunch of townsfolk died under his, 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 his idea, well, he got voted out. Venton has been mayor ever since. Uh, for what good that's done. don't stunts. like him. He does not believe us. He, he shrugs. Most of us don't. But he does make everyone very rich. So well, that's if money is all you well, can't you use your money if you're dead. Father. But Uptal's, Uptal's, a, Uptal's a good man. He's a good man. He's... He's a bit, well, he's lost some of his nerve. He's, the, the, the events of those days weigh heavily upon his soul, and I, 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 I nurture him as best I can, but he, he is determined to make things right. Hmm. Hmm. It is understandable. He, the father goes back to attending the other. Well, the father, other we, have, we are going to leave, but we need your help. As your hmm. mayor does not believe us, you need to... Find some kind of defenses. You need to prepare the townsfolk. There may be two hundred undead coming here to You're you. Two by four on your gate. You you may be in grave danger. Not enough security. Get prepared. No, I have my hands full, but well, if if 
Make people aware. I, I will do what I can. Okay. Trust me, you don't want to see mm -hmm. your town flowing oh with God. blood. It was terrible. We've seen a few empty ghost shells in our travels down here, and this has been uh, quite horrific. So, um, Prast looks at that kind of aghast, but his duty is to take care of all these folk that have just arrived, many of which are weary and and some are still just you know kind of exhausted and went off from the trip and everything so he yep. goes he kind of goes back to to treating them and, and mm -hmm. helping them one of the acolytes comes up and comes and grabs him because someone has a really nasty boil um so uh he he goes off to to help the townsfolk uh you know and treat treat their wounds then i guess we are off to see the wizard i'm gonna run and grab tariel by the hand and go we're going close <laughs> <laughs> just drag you along come with me just giving the guard a death glare as i'm being dragged away and he's like, he does this. <laughs> it's a jet. As he kind of leans back and puts his hands behind his head. Hope your yeah, chat falls. We'll see who's Del wiping that smug look off your face in about. I'm gonna All right. throw him at his So you go back to, you go back to uh, 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 Joan Arc, Joan Arc Uptol, right? And uh, he's like, he's sitting there and he's kind of got his hat in his hands and he's ringing it and he's like, so. Let us go. So you want to you want to come? Holgast will he'll know what to do, or at least I mean you know he he'll believe you. I mean I believe you. I, I heard you. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, All right. Can you tell me about LA. this dungeon on the way? Uh. uh subject, don't you think? I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just I mean, so I'd, curious. I want to know about that. Everything. I mean, I'd, I'd rather not. Oh, okay. Can you just tell me about the Everflame? I'm just I want to know what it is. The Everflame? Yeah. Uh, I'd have to dig up an old book. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's fire. Mm. Uh, the, the town founder found it, but I think I got a book about it. I'll find it for you. Okay. Yes. All right. I'd like to know. Uh, so uh, the mayor leads you kind of through the town uh, back um, to the the kind of western edge. You can see the tower on the map. It's the circle kind of over on the on the west side there uh, towards the wall. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's the only circular building on the map. Uh, and uh, uh, it, as you approach, it's kind of this crooked uh, leaning structure. And uh, he, uh, the mayor walks up to it and he's like motioning you forward. And uh, you approach uh, the tower and he walks up and kind of goes up to the door and gives it a good knock. And uh, a few moments later, uh, you hear like some books falling over and papers being thrown about, like as if someone is trying to get through a house filled with way too much stuff. And uh, suddenly the kind of, the rickety door is kind of wrenched open and you see this, he's gotta be like 70 or 80 year old man with a really long beard and a ridiculously giant owl on his shoulder. Ooh. And he's like, can I help you? And at this moment, I'd like to introuce our new player. Yes! Oh, I knew it! 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 Oh, you look awfully familiar! Do I? You've seen one gray beard, you've seen them all. Oh, really? That's what I'm told anyway. I don't oh, speak to gosh. people these days. Hello, I'm good day. Hello. Welcome, uh, Eric. Why don't you introduce yourself and your character? Hello, my name is Eric Campbell. I'm playing Holgast, and I don't do children parties anymore. I haven't done that for quite a while. So. Uh, Uptal looks at you and he goes, they're, they're not here for a party. There's there's something serious happening. 200 undead. Uh, 200 undead. No, Last wall I'm has not fallen. Buying. I'm sorry? Last wall has fallen. There are 200 undead, and they may be headed here. We don't know. Uh, we are the last knights of Last Wall. Last Possibly one. a bunch with uh, horses and lances, mm -hmm. too. Oh, That's just be a lich. Sure, there's, there's a lot. Lot of undead. I, I figured I should I should bring them by, and we could talk about it. Ventner doesn't believe him. No, he That's doesn't. not really a surprise. He's, He's useless. So they're not out of their minds. They're being serious. Then. I I believe him. Ooh. We are being. We're very deadly deaf. serious. I mean, look at them. They're they're very serious very people. Serious. They seem to be serious. We may not carry the raiments of last well, but I assure you, we are knights. The last knights. I, 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 is this is this in any way connected to what happened before? No, no, no. What, can't be. Was nope. this in the dungeon with no, the kids? No. Is this what happened? Uh, uh, that was that was a long time ago. It was 
Yes, I did. It was, well, yes, but oh. but it's, it, look, look, it's important it's to know that a lot. It, it, it's important to know that it was very, it was a very, uh, it was an innocent endeavour. The, 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 the dungeon had been cleared out. It was a look like Old Hallow's Eve where everyone sort of celebrates, you know, and yeah. out candy. It's sort of the same it, thing. It, it, Wait, we, so what race not, not even close. People well, there was, there was. People, <laughs> yes, people died. And uh, then it okay. became not close. Uh, 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 there, there, there was, there was, th- some things were stolen by some bandits and it, it raised some vengeful spirits, but they were put back in their grave. It's it's done. The place has been quiet. It's fine. So We're this just... has happened before and you still don't believe us. Well, well I believe you. You do, but the town. It is a, what we call a, a selective memory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, you don't understand. I mean, last last wall's been there for a thousand years. It's, it's mm-hmm. older than this town. And now well, it's gone. It's not there anymore. It's burnt. It was on fire the last time we saw it, and then we saw the armies coming out. Um, we see? Just... That's why I brought them. They, that seems really serious. And Ve- something in armor. Ventner's in a, in a, in a meeting. Ventner is, is, is he's, not, he's not bothering to take it seriously. He was actually quite rude to us. Yes, he was. I do not like him. <sighs> he's a mean man. Treating us as if we do not know no, anything. Really. I'm sorry. Uh, why are they here again? They came. They came here. I think they know. I think they know Colvin's daughter. We did. So your friends have. Uh, so she sent us here. Colvin. For, for Colvin. A children's party. Lieutenant. The, no, no, not for a children's party. Children's oh my god. Colvin, the the woodworker on the edge of town. Remember, his daughter yeah, went right, north yeah. to serve in the army. Lieutenant right. Ellison. Oh yeah. yes, yes. It's a fine calling, really. Yeah. Except that uh, she has probably been killed by all the undead that we have. Uh, There's more did undead. Did I say two hundred? Oh, no. Yeah. So, this so he kind of he kind of looks to you guys, all of you, and he's like, uh, "Yeah." So, so I I was thinking I was thinking maybe maybe we should maybe we should get uh, Arnama Arnama on our side. What? Arnama Arnama might help. What is our, what, is Arnama? what is an Arnama? Arnama. She she's a ranger. She lives on the edge of town. She's. Oh. Oh, wait, she's, you say? Yeah, yeah. She's she's been she's been ranging these woods forever. If there's anything coming, she'll she'll know about it, or she'll be able to find out. Oh, no, At least then we we could have some sort of warning. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's one of the finest rangers I've ever known. But uh, well, uh, you you you're coming from Last Wall. It's not for a children's party, and no. it's because of we are fairly certain the lich undead. is free. The und- there's a lich now. But the How's one that was in the tower. Things? The whispering tyrant. That one. He might be free. Yeah. And he's well, coming here. How two hundred undead we come out of know. nowhere? Two hundred undead. It's a lot. We That's fought a bad. lot. We fought. Oh, we should probably stop them. I would think, right? Well, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm. Uh, you know Ventner, though. He's not going to do anything until he uh, he has proof. You know, otherwise he's just going to sit there and 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 you know. Not do nothing. That's that's his whole thing. And then your entire beautiful town will be dead. Gone. Ashes. Well, that was going to happen with Vetner in command anyway, but yes, I agree. We should stop the undead. How? We, we're going to need proof. Well, like what? What do you want? Us to drag a zombie in? That's not a bad idea. I'm not well, doing I mean, if that. if you got one. No, do you we got one? have one. Oh, but we we how have about proof. we kidnap him in the middle have, of the night? Uh, we take the... him out to the road. Do you still have well, the I, remnants I, of the I night? showed them the, the sort of old ar- armor oh, with the sh- ghoul on it, yes. but they didn't, didn't seem it. to help none. Mm. Yeah, he kind of looked at it, and, and he just kind of sneered and was like, well, you, you, so you have old armor. And so, um, so, yeah, I mean, you, 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 it's not like you brought any of the corpses with you. I mean, the, That's going to help we none either. The gas. Or we intimidate him. Um, uh, Uptil's like, well, I mean, you, you could you can try, but but he just tends to get to get to get mean when people get mean to him, and and you don't need the mayor. The mayor's well, just one mean. person. Well, but you need the, to rally to people. But no, the problem is. So you, have you have you have you met have you met Captain Rennett, the the guard captain? Oh yeah, yes. he's a nasty. Yeah. I he's a, don't like. He's a he's <laughs> he's Ventner's toady. He he does whatever Ventner wants. And sure. and and he's the captain of the guard. Without him, you you none of the soldiers are going to listen to you. They all follow they all follow Rennet. Hmm. But we have a soldier here who is more rousing and more uh, compelling than Rennet will uh, ever be. Right yes, here. Please please please. Dax, I'm, I'm an old to man me? now and I uh, haven't been out in a long time. It's very kind of you to say. I, I was actually talking about this wonderful dwarf lady here. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. 
<laughs> Omelette, by the way. What? No, thank you. I don't eat eggs, but I appreciate meeting you. Uh, my name is Holgast. <laughs> it is a. Uh, this is my tower. I would ask you all to come inside, but unfortunately, it tends to lean a little bit further the more guests I have. Uh, what can I do for you? Dead. No, I'm we're dead. we're here. You want me to kill someone? No, we're here about the undead. Remember. So let's go. Good. We should. Goodness, Mark. We should go. We should go find our Nama. Oh, Norma, yes. Yeah. Finest ranger in the woods, if I uh, don't mind me saying so. They'll help with your dead problem. Although, most people that are dead stay dead. No, they not don't. Not if there's a oh, lich no. free. There's a lich? Yes. And I really think it's we important that we find Colvin. You so thought this why was going to help us. So, so, this goes on for about <laughs> ten minutes <laughs> of everyone trying to remind Hullgast <laughs> of what's going on before Uptal eventually is just like, all right, so we we should we should just we should we should go we should go yeah, talk I think to our Nama. That gives up about two minutes before anybody says anything and is already just like oh. on their own trying to scout for whoever this Arnama mm. is because they've had it. Uh, I, I'll, I will turn to my owl and say, Morkley, you have got to watch the tower. I'm gone. I don't want you perching on my shoulder if I'm going to be walking. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he kind of he kind of the owl looks at you with kind of knowing wisdom and hops back over to the nearest pile of books where it takes a claw and flips the page and just continues reading. I never understand what you're saying to me. <laughs> no. I like your owl. Oh, he's not mine. Oh, no. I like that owl. He shares the tower with me. Oh. Yeah, but thank you. I'm I'm sure he understood that. Ooh, he, he kind of he kind of the, the, the owl does look back your way and kind of nod and then go back to the book. <laughs> Very smart. Very smart, very smart. So, um, the group of you now with uh, Mayor, Mayor, ex mayor, uh, uh, Joan Arc Uptil, and Holgast uh, assembled, uh, the group of you uh, begin making your way uh, through town to the other side of town. Uh, apparently. Uh, Do we see mm -hmm. villagers on our way, like people who are native to this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. What does their general. Uh, Demeanor seem to be. Um, well, I mean, it's a it's like? it's a pretty rural uh, forest town. Uh, as you make your way around, because uh, Jonark takes you kind of the long way around, he kind of cuts through. Uh, he he doesn't take the main street right past the hall. He kind of goes between yards and 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 down side streets, avoiding kind of the center of town. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of the common folk of of Cassin. Uh, as you can see, it's not a gigantic town. It's a, it's a relatively small place, but. There are a lot of people here, and uh, you see people. It's you know it's midday right about now, so you see some some folk. Like there's uh, you get past uh, one person who's out in their yard using a, 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 a foot powered uh, spinning wheel to grind away at some wood to kind of shape it. Um, next to him uh, is is his wife who's whittling a different piece. It looks like they're making some piece of furniture or something. And um, so you know you see a lot of folk uh, practicing their trades. Uh, right now, because it's the middle of the day. Holgas is going to use this as an opportunity to drone on and on about the the wood, the, the skill of the woodcarvers in in in, in particular, they're very skilled at working with dark wood, which is a special kind of of wood that's very resilient and, ah. and very strong. Um, and Iculus takes this in, very appreciative of all the art that's happening, all the crafting that's happening around. Yeah, I mean, some of it looks like the front yards of those people who do like chainsaw sculptures. So there's like there's like there's like giant like statues out in everybody's front yard, like. Like, mm -hmm. that's, that's their showroom. They're just showing off their work to anybody who, nice. who happens to wander like by. Like that random wooden statue in Stardew Valley. Like, what yeah, I know why. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Um, so um, as you are making your way kind of through the town, you do get a sense that this is a, this is a you know, it's kind of a rural town, but it's a bunch of hardworking folk who, who, are, who are incredibly skilled at their trade. Is there a bell tower on the church? No. Dang it. No. All right, there goes that plan. No. Maybe we can get paint somewhere and paint on the wall. That last wall has fallen. Has this wall really fallen? It, is it gone? It is gone. gone. It was on um, fire when we left. And I saw armies dead pouring out of it, following us with with skeletons on skeletal horseback in the lead. And then I saw, saw the glint of armor in the distance coming out of the castle. <sighs> So, as a note, you also left behind Sir Falmer and uh, Private uh, Uncare mm -hmm. back at the shrine mm -hmm. with the refugees. Well, uh, just so you know where they went to. Okay, they would good. have a more detailed account if we yeah. need more. Uh, if this mayor believes them. Yes. It is some 20 odd people. But if I can it. just be a little bit of help here, but the current mayor is not exactly a we know. Good, good. Yeah, so I couldn't find the words, but uh, just to say that it's uh, 
Just just to put in the back of your mind, it might be good to have a backup plan in case you can't convince him. Well, we probably can't. We probably can't. Mm, no. We cannot. What's well, if we if we had proof, I mean, uh, the council can't ignore proof. That's uh, true. The council uh, is the way to go. So that's a very good point. The council are the ones to definitely lean on. I wouldn't I wouldn't spend your energy on the mayor. I would say focus on the council. Well, the council. What proof would be mm. enough? Well, even one dead, one dead, they could say, "Oh, it was from the cave." Or I, well, I, I think, I, I think we could. I, I think if we take action, we'll be able to find the proof. I'm certain of it. Okay. Well, it is you who know the members of these council mem- uh, council people. The way I see it is, once they have concluded our meeting, if we have found this Arnama, we can then uh, maybe uh, focus our attentions on them. All right. So you're able to kind of make your way through the town and uh, as you continue to talk about your strategy here and eventually you find yourself over near the east gate and uh, and uh, uh, so there's a there's a small uh, shack on one side of it and across from it is is a nicer house and uh, and uh, you you head over to the kind of nicer house um, and Uptil goes and, and knocks on the door and a few moments go by, and, and the door is opened by a, a pretty lithe, uh, spry-looking, older human woman. She has uh, long gray hair that's a bit frizzy, but uh, tied back neatly. She's wearing uh, tanned brown and green leathers. Um, she has um, some arrows that she's currently in the middle of making in her hand. She, she like opens up the door and goes back to whittling the top of this arrow, and she goes, Ah, Jonak, what can I help you with? Undead! What? <laughs> Two hundred undead. She kind of. Sorry to scare you, but it's and, and and there are other townsfolk kind of nearby, and some of them start looking, and she's like, well, "Don't be daft, get in here, stop we shouting about know. monsters." Maybe we should. Anyone cause a panic? We mm-hmm. should know. They're definitely no one. Might not be the right. Paul Gast, can I get you your tea? Oh, I, I, I yes. Yeah. Uh, do, do, could you remind me what kind of tea I normally take? I think it's the uh, the, the black tea. I think. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. It's, the, it's the the forest mushroom. Actually, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. forest mushroom. I'll, I'll 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 fetch it for you. Thank you. Uh, uh, tea, anyone? Tea, anyone? Oh. I will uh, always take some. Yes, tea. please. Um, you sure. make your way inside, and she kind of ushers the group of you into her common room, oh. and it's filled with hunters' trophies, like. The walls are covered in furs and animal heads of all different sorts, many of which are, are, you know, things like bears and wolves, but there are also things like, that looks like a a lion's head, but it has the face of a man. Uh, And there's there's all sorts of kind of weird reptilian heads, one of which is is covered in horns. It's relatively small, uh, but it might be a dragon head. Um, And quite skilled. And she's like, Oh, you're too sweet. Take take a seat. <laughs> I, I just want to do a quick once over. Last time we found a hut with this good of hunting skills. They sorta turned out to be a werewolf. So I just wanted just give an early She looks at you. You've been in the northern Fangwood, haven't you? There's a whole pack of loops up there. What? Mm. And you drew one right to us. <gasps> Ah! Uh, Didn't we already go over the uh, oh. <laughs> she, I'll she, be outside. Not having uh, doubts anymore. No, stay. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Sit down, my dear. Sorry. Our Namalins over. Go, go easy on her. It's easy to to mistake them. They look just like you or me until the fangs come out. Hey. Let me go fetch Freddy, some tea. I won't say it anymore. I don't like feeling so bad about I'm it. Sorry. We got some rabbits I'm out sorry. of it, and you got some cool. Can I hug and... you? I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I won't bring it up again. Then he made fun of my name. Oh, that's so mean. Mm-hmm. He's a butt. I'm glad he's gone. He's sorry. not. He's right there. Oh, oh. that one. Oh. <laughs> what? Are we talking about me? <laughs> you won't remember in a moment anyway. <laughs> what did I do? Up, up, Nothing. up till just kind of sits in the corner wringing his hat. And he sits down next to a little taxidermied squirrel. And he's kind of playing with its nose. And uh, I'm, I'm going to lean over to him and just say, how have you been holding up? Oh, uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. You know, um, uh, they, uh, they, 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 they turned me down for a council position again. So, you know, uh, I just kind of, you know, I'm, I'm biding my time. I'm gonna get back in there. But you're doing the right thing, rallying these good folk to, to take care of this. Well, when problem. I when I saw him come into town, I knew this this was my chance. This is my chance because you know, I mean, you know, you know. I know. I know. I know. Um. A few moments go by, and uh, uh, Arnama comes back with a kettle and a number of cups. 
cups and some and some tea. No, ma. And, have you have you been seeing or hearing of anything of undead wandering in the woods or such? Is it a bit of she pain? goes, uh, well, to tell the truth, uh, my good whole guest, I, ha- I haven't actually been r- out ranging in, in almost a week. I've been here. I needed to resupply my arrows. And uh, last time I was out, uh, the bow took a bit of a beating. Mm. Nasty, nasty bear came on me and snapped the damn thing in half. Mm. But I've got it fixed as good as new. And, and she points up to above the mantle and there is an exquisite uh, dark wood bow up above the mantle. It's It's gorgeous. And she's just like, yeah, but I'm going to be going back out soon. Why? Do you need me to look for something? Well, it, it would appear that this army of undead that might be hidden this way, they, what was the name of the city they Last destroyed? Wall. Last Wall. apparently has been burned to the ground. Well, not not all of Last Wall. The gone. Mm-hmm. gone. We yeah. are the last. When? Fire keep has gone. You're looking at the she's, last She's nights. looking at you. The we were knighted specifically vigil? because... Yeah. Even Vigil? Vigil! Vigil! I heard about Vigil! It exploded! She... Did you explode? Kind of looks at you wide when eyes. did this happen? I don't know. We I was told. four days ago. Just four days the ago. The capital? Yes. Almost everything. Was does anyone possible. does anyone know what happened to Watcher Lord Ruthen? No. No, I don't no. know who that is. Unfortunately, he's the he's the leader of of Last Wall. I mean, you you never got to that point in your training, but uh, Arnama's like the leader of Last Wall. You, you, you no. know. We've only been awesome. knights. For a couple days. Did not for give us very days. much information. She held back a lot because we were not trained. We were not cleared for that information. Oh, no. So we we have a lot of holes in our... Mm-hmm. We got knighted in sort of a rush nice. ceremony. We are. It yeah, happened we right were, before she went into we the were keep. We were told by a Lieutenant Ellison to come visit Colvin's girl. Yes, Colvin. we oh, I haven't yes. seen. We I haven't he- seen her since yes. she was... Yay, hi. She yes. Oh, I, I used to feed her honeycomb. She used to love it. Where's Colvin? We should also find... Colvin? No, he lives down the way. To let him know. Can we... Can you take us to him? It is very important that we meet him. Uh, well, absolutely. Uh, uh, she, she looks to you... It, it sounds like I should, I should be making my way immediately. Do you... Please, but I mean, this is how, how, how can yeah. I help? And she, she kind of sits down on the end. This is, this, is like, this is like someone's grandmother being like, do you need me to go out and kill some monsters? Yes. Right, you know? The important <laughs> thing is obviously this town does not have the best defenses. If mm. there is something coming, they need to be warned. But they need to be warned by somebody they know and mm-hmm. respect. And we, we have been told that you are that person. And she, goes also- up, she goes up to the mantle and snaps the bow off of it and uh, goes and sits down with it and... Uh, she, 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 uh, it's not stringed, right? So it wasn't a perfect bow yes. shape up there, but she, she goes and sits down and starts oiling it. Um, she says, look, I'm going to need this sometime soon. Well, that fool Ventnor, he's not going to listen to you without proof. And, yes. and can if you, you bring us a zombie, zombie head, undead limb, undead oh. anything? That reminds me, apparently there's a lich. They, they left that part out. We think that <laughs> she looks at her bow. Dead. This ain't gonna do it against oh, a lich. I know, I know. Oh, we're not gonna go fight him now. We are not prepared. But no, I mean, there's we how else would two hundred undead come out of nowhere? We did, we did see some rather uh, intimidating things come out of that castle. Some of which we have not yet laid eyes upon. I do not think. But no. <sighs> well, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Jonark, you want to take him by to see uh, Colvin's Colvin's place? And Jonark's like, yeah, I, I, I can do that. She's like, I think it's probably best that I, I get out there right away. Um, I'm going to go over and I'm going to um, pass off one of my vials of holy water to her. Hmm. Say, just in case. Oh, she, she looks at it and she's like, that's precious. But don't worry, I can, I can oh, handle okay. myself. Oh, uh, sure you don't I don't need take anyone. it. If it's going to be in day, don't she, take it. Oh, she she goes over to a, uh, a small closet and opens it up. And there's like seven quivers of arrows in there. And she's like. Yeah, I think we're going to go with these. And she takes them off the, the rack and throws them over her shoulder. And she's like, yeah, all right. Well, I'm going to go take a look and see what I can find. Before uh, where- she goes, I am very sorry. I have not properly introduced myself. I am Lesson Shorbuckle at your service. If you have anything that you need, I would be happy to oblige. Or if you would be happy to teach me something at some other time, I would be happy to learn. You have an exquisite bow and your selection of airs. I am very sorry to interrupt you from doing your work. Please go ahead, but I just needed to tell you, I am very impressed. Yeah, she, 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 she kind of looks down at you and she's like, yeah, you got gumption. I like it. Maybe maybe when I get back, we'll, we'll go do some ranging. Uh, Narma, be careful. Mm. I know you're good, but if there's a lich involved, it would be a shame. Be careful. Where, where are y'all? Uh, where are you staying? 
Well, we now just know. got yeah. here. Well, I suppose you could stay at my tower, but like I said, don't lean on the walls. She, she, she looks at you, and she's behind him, and she's like, no, it's, don't. It's, it's, yeah, don't. She's like, maybe maybe they'd be more comfortable at the Seven Silvers. It's it's the only inn in town. Oh, right, we have an inn. Yeah. 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 Right, right, <laughs> Uptil's right. like, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty nice. You you could go stay with them. The the uh, Asina's, Asina's really nice. Asina and her wife, they're, they're really nice folk. You, you should go stay with them. Okay. 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 That's what you should go. meet Asina and her wife. <clears throat> they're very good people. <laughs> Abdul just that's kind of that's stares. That's like them. <laughs> that is the case. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Thank you for the advice. Like, she's like, all right, well, well, you all stay as long as you like. Uh, lock up when you're done. She, she looks to, uh, she looks to Holgast and Uptal. And she's like, well, I, I don't think I have much time to spare. If you excuse me, I'm going to go uh, uh, get into my traveling leathers. That's a woman uh, of action. I'll be right Got back. Got to respect be that. Be safe. Eh? Uh, so she goes back into the back room, leaving you all out there to uh, discuss your, your plans. Um, and a few moments later, she comes back out, and she's now in much darker browns and greens. It's more like a, a, a more camouflage suit of armor. And uh, she throws a kind of darker green cloak over her shoulder. Uh, she's got her bow. She's got, um, on one side of her, it looks like she's got a number of snares um, that she's uh, got that look kind of like, like, like bear traps of some sort. Um, and she's like, all right, well, I'm going to go uh, take a look and see what I can see. Uh, but uh, uh, don't be hard to find. Well, For you. <laughs> I don't think I'll be hard to find. She, she looks at you and gives you a wink. Just follow the trail uh, being dragged along the ground by my beard. <laughs> You'll find me just fine. Oh, I always know where to find you. All right, so she, uh, she kind of turns on her heel and, uh, and makes her way out. Uh, and goes uh, uh, walking out of town. She like literally goes out the front door. You see her pass the window and head straight out the gate. I... She's good at what she does. And uh, she, I, I think she might actually have an official fan base. I think well, I might I need to figure out whether I, I, I would like to become a member. Um. <laughs> well, you might be um. on your way to becoming the leader of that one. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so, so, so yeah, she, if there's something to be found out there, she'll, she'll, she'll find it. So, so that, that's good. Then we should find Colvin. Yes. Oh, yes. I should think she's. Though. She looks very capable to me. Well, well capable against a lich, though. That's mm. that's asking well, quite a lot. The, the lich is not with them. All right. Uptil looks at all of you and says, "So I, I can I can take you up to to Colvin's place if yes. you like." Yes. Have you talked to Father Prest yet? Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Has he, he tried knows. to get you go to church yet? Oh, well, I'm a cleric of Serenry. Oh, so yes. Uh huh. Excellent. Well. Good. Yeah, he, yeah, he'll, he'll that, keep trying though. That, that's oh. where I found them. They were they were at the church. They brought all the the refugees to the church. Oh, good for you. There was refugees. Oh, yes. not too many. He, <laughs> Holgas walks over and takes your hand and pats the top of it. Says, "Very good, very good. <laughs> good to know that there's good people in the world still." Oh yes, the light of Serenray guides us all towards goodness. You are just a a a, a daisy. You really oh. are. You're just a summer flower swaying in the breeze with goodness. Well, thank you. Usually people don't like me because I look scary, but thank you. You absolutely look uh, terrifying, but you're oh. a nice person, and I like you. Oh. My name's Holgast, by the way. Uh, I'm a wizard that lives up on top. Oh of yes, the, I know. We the, met at your tower. Yes. Oh yes, 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 yes. Right, yes. 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 Like, yes. All right. Do you want to well, meet my beetles? <laughs> And she like opens up the hive, oh. and five beetles come out. And they're just like sitting on her beetle-covered armor. Squeezes an Oculus into his eyes. This one is Dio. Dio. This one's Elton. That Elton. one's David and David. George and George. the other. This is a strange hive. name for beetles, I would say. Well, George is a very typical beetle. He looks like uh, so I've heard. Strong, really. Uh -huh, Could probably lift is. a lot of sticks. Maybe beat things Elton's with them. Elton's my favorite. I see. Elton's very nice. He's and very and and we'll just carry on like that. As we, uh, as we, yeah. Uptil, <laughs> Uptil's Uptil's just beetles. staring at all of you like, those are nice beetles. <laughs> Thank you. I know they are. I'm just gonna start shuffling, shuffling. Lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> as she's showing oh, is off beetle the beetles. time over? Can we focus on? Oh yeah, I mean, it's beetles time over. Oh, okay. It's a walk and okay. talk. It's a yeah. walk and we'll talk. We'll carry on okay. like this as we so, go. So yeah. we'll you, you make your it. you make your way uh, back uh, toward the southern side of town. And uh, you, you just kind of cut through a, a few alleys and you end up at a uh, one of the yards that you passed before that is filled with like exquisite carved 
uh, statues and uh, 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 it's mostly artistic sculpture, like wood sculpture. And uh, there's a number of pieces in the yard, some of which look like they've been here for years. They look really weathered and old. And um, right up near the front door, and you, you didn't quite catch it the first time, but as you make your way up to the front door, the lintels of the front door are carved to look like knights. Mm. And they look exactly like the knight that you found in the personal effects. Oh, this is gonna, gonna hurt. Sad. This is gonna hurt. Oh, oh. God. Uh, the mayor's like, uh, this is this is where this is where Colvin lives. Uh, can I? Mr. Ellison. This is the last oh. of our duty. Can I go up? I have the bag. Sure. I'll go up Make with sure you. that you maybe not mention too much the undead. Uh, simply. I think you should know. Well, yeah, but maybe you don't lead with that. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that's not. Has someone fallen? They don't have tact. Mm -hmm. hey, let me do That's what happens let, when you go to a monastery. I'm just gonna pat, pat you. I can do most of the talking, if that would make you feel better. I'll just do it. Mm. I'm just gonna do the talking. Why don't we all go to the door? Okay. The, the door actually uh, opens, Ooh. and um, you see a man who, um, you know, there's a strong family resemblance. Um, Ellison had, uh, uh, you know, kind of longer, uh, graying hair, uh, pulled back. His is, his has gone full gray and he's, he's, he's a bit bald at the top. And, uh, but he looks in, in good shape, even though he looks to be about 60 or so. And, uh, he comes up and he's wearing like a woodworker's apron that has like a bunch of carving tools in the front of it. And, uh, he's currently got... A, uh, a block of wood that is currently shapeless. You're not sure what it's turning into just yet, but it looks mostly still like a log, mm -hmm. but he's kind of drawn all over it and he's in the process of scraping off some of the bark. And uh, he, 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 kind of, he kind of opens up the door and uh, looks to all of you and he says, oh, welcome. Welcome to Ellison's Carvings. What, what can I help you with? Uh, um, pleasure to meet you, sir. We are. He's like, oh, pleasure to meet you too. Uh, are you interested in a custom piece, or uh, yes, are you looking for no. something, uh, Mister? Unfortunately, uh, Colvin Ellison, correct? Yes. We are knights from Last War. We have some grave news. Do you he, mind if we come in? He kind of sinks down to his knees. No. No, no, it's okay. And Linnaeus comes over and kneels in front of him and says, "It's." No. I, I had to bring you something. It's... We don't know anything for sure. No. Um, and she pulls the little bag out and she passes it off to him and she says, "We." Not my antler. We don't, we don't know. Where is she? The she last was wall. at... That's, uh... Last defending wall. the last wall. <clears throat> we don't know anything, but... He, he says, well, well why, don't you, why don't you come in? I don't want to be blubbering out here in the open. And he kind of invites you all inside. Um, inside his house is an exquisite, almost a museum of carving. Every surface in his, in his small abode has been carved. Um, like the beams uh, across the ceiling, it looks like he probably stood on a chair and carved them to look like leaves. That's so the, cool. the, the, the chairs, the, the, the fireplace, Everything about this this wooden home has been exquisitely carved. Like even the boards making up the walls have like this uh, wave pattern on them. And he, he just kind of invites you in and he says, oh, take, take a seat, take a seat. I, 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 we are so sorry to bring you such news. I, I, want to, I want to hear everything. Are you sure? Yes. Um, hours roll by. Mm -hmm. um, you, you relate the story to... to, to, to Colvin, and, and he is heartened to hear uh, how his daughter served and how she, how she lived. He, he's, she hasn't been around here in, in, in a few years. She's been, she's been busy doing, doing important work, training, training more knights, and I see that you're her, the her last, last cadets. The last knights. Well, you, you always have a place at, at my table in my home. Um, I don't have much space to put you up, but if you ever need a good meal or something, you're 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 free to swing by. I, I. You're very kind. Uh, I thought that perhaps, and she reaches into the bag and she pulls out the little knight, and she says, "I thought perhaps you might want this back." He 
so thanks for bringing it back. And he uh, he takes it and takes it up to the mantle where he takes uh, a pair of candles that he gets out of a drawer and just puts them next to it to make a small a shrine to her and just kind of puts it in the middle and lights the two candles on the side. He's obviously uh, hoped that she has somehow prevailed in her <clears throat> battles and escaped, but until we receive word to the contrary, all we can do is hope. Aculus grabs his hand, walks up to the little shrine he built. So mm. I would like to pray with you. Can I join? Absolutely. Ooh, and I'll should. pull out my, Give some space. my violin. Yeah. Updal, Updal just kind of backs off into yes. the corner. I, and, yeah, I'll, 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 Liz, I'll put Liz my hand on the shoulders. Um, so, uh, um, Colvin isn't, isn't much of a holy man. Um, he, he mentions how, you know, uh, he, he never thought he would, he would carry on after his, after his wife passed. Um, and then when Andla left, he, he didn't know what to do with himself, but he found, he found meaning in his work and, uh, he, he, you know, raised a, a, a fine daughter and he, he's, he's terribly proud of her mm -hmm. and, uh, and he is grateful to all of you for being with his daughter in what he truly hopes is in her final moments. But is she who honored us by trusting us with this charge? She must have seen something in you. Well, and I see that too. You set things into motion. You're good people. You end up raising a good daughter who ends up making a difference, who ends up inspiring a bunch of people to come to this town and to warn a bunch of people about 200 undead to save lives. We didn't well, mention the number. Uh, uh, oh, he's like. My he, eyes go white. He, oh, he, bl uh, he blanches. I, 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 Just, you Th theoretically, uh, let me guess that fool Ventner ain't doing anything about no, it. No, he's useless. He's garbage. Terrible. We're going to have to try to find evidence of something that's, that your daughter fought against so that we can save the town, but we need to appeal to the council. Our Nama's out scouting, but do you have any influence over? I'm on the council. Oh, oh, why aren't you at a meeting? I don't go to his fool meetings, they're a damn waste of time. He's not wrong. Mostly him just talking about figures and numbers, trying to decide how much money the guild can make, how much cut they can get out of us common woodworkers. Money will mm. not save mm. your town, especially since they uh, have done such a great job of uh, making money off of commerce and spent none of it on your town's defense. Your food do very bad. The mayor, Sorry. the mayor that runs the town now, used a lot of the anger against my friend here to get power. And once that happened, he proceeded to do whatever he wanted to do with it. All he needs to do is just keep talking over the truth. <clears throat> is there some way we can, uh, not Up kill you, like, he, he, but, uh, He's right, you know. How do we fortify your, your town? How do we help your people? Just in case we cannot get everyone out before this wave comes at you, we must, we must try. Can you influence the rest of your council? You bring me proof, and I'll bring it to the council. They really? can't ignore it. We might, are gonna bring you proof. I might be able to rally some townspeople if you give me a platform now, tomorrow. Now be careful, because doing that is gonna rile up the mayor, and he's got the guard on his side. He, he pays them well. Up to like, he can make your life miserable here. It's ridiculous well, to say it. He's already started, he <laughs> so. He does not know how we can make his life miserable. Just be careful. He's good at galvanizing the people because of he's good at harnessing their anger. If you try to speak out against him publicly without a case to make, he'll turn them against you. It's it's how he got me. Hmm. Well, I don't know if I'll specifically talk against him. No, mm. let's, let's but wait. I will... If we scare the townspeople, then they could just go scattering, and then we could scare them right into the hole. Although... Unless we encourage them to build up the defenses, we all have... You know, they you know, have skills. She's got a good point. If we can get some of the evidence first and then maybe put you on a pulpit for uh, to speak to everyone, that might do the trick. Uptil's like, that, that, yes. that might work, and Calvin says, And then, then, if, a public show would allow me to really rally the, the council. And if just happened to sort of get detained for a sort of other reason. You know, <laughs> you do that with our, you. Right. if you do your plan when we get the evidence, I bet you okay. anything, we, the council will have to do what the people say. Well, so mm. what do we do in the meantime while we're waiting for the evidence? Is there anything else Uptal, we can do? Uptal says, dinner? Well, no, not, I mean, I'm hungry, yes, but no, we, ne we need to do something. Sometimes the only thing that we can do, the wisest thing to do, 
his weight. No, I refuse to believe that. There has to be something else we can do in the meantime. Some some kind of weapon we can get or, or I don't know, build up some of the wall. Anything. Just remember that eating and taking care of yourself is not doing nothing. You're going to have That's to be... That's what to say. You're going to have to be strong if 200 and dead are marching this way. And you need... That's we need rest true. for magic. And we, 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 we should go We should go to Seven Silvers. Tonight's, tonight's, tonight's roast night. It's, it's really good. Wait. Linius. Wait, wait. Roasted, uh... Did boar. Ar- did, ah. Wait, 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 wait. Did Arma ever give me my tea? She did. Now is not the time, August. <laughs> she gave you your tea. You All right, let's, quite let's go get dinner. <laughs> and and Abdul's <laughs> like, Abdul, Abdul is getting up to leave. Colvin looks to all of you as as, as Abdul is, is shuffling out. Um, and uh, uh, Colvin looks to all of you with with sincerity and says, "Thank you, thank you for being with my daughter. And I I swear I'll I'll do whatever I can to to help you and to help this town." <coughs> I'm sorry thank we you. didn't have better news. If she did go to Ferasma's grace, she did it doing what she loved. But we can't hope for anything more than that. Thank you very much for the pleasure of your hospitality. Bring me proof. I'll bring it to the council. So, you're able to make your way through town. It's uh, it's an autumn uh, evening. Uh, after spending a few hours talking to Colvin, relating this story to him about what happened, uh, the afternoon has kind of rolled right by into early evening. Strolling through the town, making your way back to the town center, um, a cold wind begins to settle on the town. Autumn is here, and as uh, the leaves, many of which are still green, slowly begin to show their autumn colors, uh, the folk in town all start bundling up, lighting up uh, uh, lanterns, and uh, the town uh, slowly settles in to another night. Updal leads you back to the town square and uh, around to the west. There uh, on the other side is the Seven Silvers Inn. Uh, He uh, takes you uh, up to it and uh, is like, as you make your way up, you can smell the delicious uh, uh, scent of roasted boar wafting out from the open door. The windows are open, allowing the cool autumn breeze inside. Inside, you can see a roaring hearth. Uh, there are people inside enjoying a meal. You can hear taverns clanking. You can hear some knuckle bones rolling. And it sounds like the, uh, the inn itself is a, is a busy, busy place this evening. You make your way inside. Upto kind of goes up and pushes in the doors and is like, uh, as he does so, uh, a, you hear a woman call out. She's like, Jonak, your usual table? And he's like, oh, I think I'm going to need a bigger one tonight. And, uh, and all of you come uh, ushering in. And uh, behind the bar uh, are a uh, pair of women uh, who are uh, both serving up drinks and food. And uh, the two of them are kind of flying around the house, uh, serving up drinks to everyone. And uh, uh, one of them, uh, the one who called out, uh, comes over to uh, Jonar, kisses him on the cheek, and leads him up to a table that's a bit uh, up on a stage where on other nights if they had a bard or a band, they might, they might, or a couple bards, they might remove the tables and that would be the stage. Mm-hmm. But tonight it's just got a big table on it and it happens to be empty. And she leads Joan Arc up and all of you and she's like, oh, welcome, welcome. I'm, I'm Asina and uh, I'm Asina Silvers and welcome to Seven Silvers. How can I, how can I help you? Where are you travelers from? Mm-hmm. The last wall. Far away. Oh, travelers from the north. Well, welcome. Welcome. Please have a seat. Tonight's uh, tonight's meal is, is roasted boar with all the fixings. Just the usual need for me, if you would, please. Ah, uh, no problem. No problem, Holgast. Uh, we'll, we'll get we you have, all uh, set. Traveled long and far, and we will uh, we will take all of it. And <laughs> also, bring bring us a couple of, of bottles of ale and some wine, and mm-hmm. uh, perhaps a, cu- a few pitchers of water, if you have it. Some of us are not uh, so good with the drink. Uh, fantastic! I will. I will get you served up with a proper feast here as quick as I can. Uh, if oh, if guys, what is your usual if I don't get to you, you can always talk to my wife Narina, and, and we will get you all set. I, uh, so drink uh, honeymead. Welcome. Settle in, 
and uh, enjoy what the Seven Silvers has to offer. Will any of you be staying here tonight? I I, I know you're not from around these parts, and we, we have we have rooms. I think I'm going to try and stay in the temple and be close to Serenry. Uh, if you like, uh, we have we have common guest rooms, and then we have we have uh, the the forest palace that you can stay at. That's on the top floor, and it costs seven silvers a night. <laughs> if if one of you like it, it is open. Common yeah, room yes. is probably <laughs> <laughs> please. And may I uh, offer an exchange of sorts? And I pull out my. Uh, my violin. I would be more than happy to entertain the guests. Ooh. She's like, well, if you're not half bad, consider that a deal. Great. Would you, uh, well, I'd like to eat first, if that's all right. Of course. Well, it's going to take us a minute to, to rustle up all the food. So if you like, just uh, why don't you go play a ditty, and uh, then we'll uh, we'll serve you up. Wonderful. Um. I, I, I've just sort of been staring at Linnaeus. Because <laughs> um, she sort of looks how I feel at the moment. Mm -hmm. So... I just want to sort of, as we're sitting down for dinner, go over and give her a bit of a hip bump mm. and wrap my arm around you and just say, right, listen to me. I know you want to do something, but my sister Roke Belly always said, <clears throat> you can't do anything till you get a bit of boar in your belly. So let's get some food in us and yes. then we'll fight. She said that often? All the time, really. She was sort of a boar fiend. Oh. Mm. She's always gone. Come back. Lots of boar. Okay, you're, mm. you're right. I just, I, I don't like not doing something. I Trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think at one point, I think at one point over dinner too, as Holga, as we're eating, Holga will put down fork and knife and say, "It's not because I'm old, you know. The memory thing. Just so you all know, mm. it's nothing like that." What happened? Well, it's just when you're a wizard. As you get older, magic has a certain effect on you, and it's not all people have to go through this. Very, very small number of people experience what I experience, but when you cast spells and you have to relearn spells and then cast spells and relearn spells, there's, there's a certain price to be paid when using the arcanic arts. And uh, after some time, sometimes you don't remember if you learned the spell or not, and uh, it starts to happen elsewhere. So it's not because I'm old. Just want to put it out there. Some people like to dismiss me for that, but it's not true. Is there any way to help you? Nope. It's the price you pay. And may I just say that these issues that come up, they're just, I'm just fine with them. You learn to live with them. What if you had a notepad and you could write notes to yourself? I gave up on that. Oh. Yes, because I just discovered that I was writing notes to myself all the time, over and over. I had six pages reminding myself mm. that I hadn't had the tea over at my favourite ranger's house. How old are you? I don't know. Uh, no, 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 sorry. Yes, no, I'm 70. No, no. 76. 76. Hi. At this point... Uh, five. Mm. Five. <laughs> 75. <laughs> Asina comes back with a giant uh, platter, and she sets it down in the middle of the table, and in the middle of it is the boar's head, and it's surrounded by slices of roasted boar. Uh, around that is a ring of potatoes and carrots and onions and uh, forest mushrooms. She throws down uh, truncheons of, of uh, bread, uh, you know, bread that's just kind of hollowed out in the middle so you can take the food and throw it in the, in the middle of the bread. Uh, there's, there's some uh, crisp autumn apples that she serves up that are roasted. Uh, and she, she throws down uh, mugs of mead. She brings out a number of uh, bottles of, of, of wine, of forest wine. And, uh, and she says, ah, uh, this is just the start. I, I, I put a pudding in the oven. Oh, delightful. <clears throat> we haven't had something sweet in a while. And Ikula sits down and grabs a napkin. She is <laughs> very She she kind of <laughs> she kind of proper. looks at you cuz like the 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 mouth slit on your mask is like this wide. Yes, how do you <laughs> eat? Yeah, I stop playing cuz I want to watch him eat. A chocolate's you, very very small. Will you let yeah. me clean that sometime? You just put your hood up so we don't see a face and then you take it off and then I can clean it and then we'll sure. keep Really? Can you get the napkin underneath the... I can't show you what's behind No, I'm not going to look. I just put the hood up, take the mask off with the hood still all over your face completely, and then I'll clean the whole thing. Hmm. Yeah? It does... It still smells I can fix it. She's, she's like, I could get you a straw. Oh. 
It's straw would work, yes. Mm. So they knew that they've been <laughs> using around these parts. It's very, very useful. Straw. Yeah, she she gets just a piece of like a uh, uh, reed from like the river. Mm. Um, but I mean, you know, they they have that, and they sure. they, 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 they they she she provides it. Achilles takes a, the, takes the straw. Full service in worth the silvers, I'd say. Mm-hmm. She yeah, says we aim to please. We're the only one in town, so. Helping. I have an idea. Put the hood up, and then. You can eat under the hood and give me the mask, and then I'll clean it with my napkin. I promise Why to give it back. I don't. Uh, it's the only way to clean it. You have to take it off. Probably not good for your skin. <laughs> it's give probably yourself a not chance good to for your breathe. skin. Yeah, he was starting to get a little. I promise. I will nervous. promise to give it back. A little nervous, and he's. Uh, no, what you're if I? Right, like, you're wait. fine. You're fine. You don't have to see any help. of this. Help in a bore. <laughs> <laughs> Would help you feel better. Okay. So he. He, he leans over, puts the hood down, takes his mask off for the first time in a very, very long time, kind of whiffs at the stench, mm. and then takes the napkin that was here, wraps I, it I, I actually uh, dampen with a little bit of water a cloth yeah. and sort of pass it to Achilles, and you can also wipe your face with that. Yes! Oh, very smart. So he keeps, he keeps it down and <laughs> re- receives this from them, and... Wipes his face, takes the napkin around his head so you can't see even anything but the mm-hmm. top, but this part of his head. Yeah. And uh, hands the mask okay. over to I Lena. promise to be very fast. Comes back up and says, like, <clears throat> <"Clean it." laughs> And very properly cuts everything. Yeah. And, <laughs> and to be clear, you're like a giant hulking <laughs> knight. You're like gigantic. Way, a whole gas. Yeah. This is what I look like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Linnaeus plays some like awesome. rosemary. <laughs> you look like you look like a very like uh, you, you just look like the medieval version of Jason Voorhees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So 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 like the mask comes off and everyone can just see this very thin slice of of, <laughs> of clammy looking flesh, yes. and uh, and you're sitting there cleaning it, and man, the inside of this mask is gross. I am cleaning it's, the heck out of it. I'm uh, grabbing some, like, rose and some rosemary and just smearing uh, it all inside. I'm making sure it is clean as heck before I pass it back. Linnaeus, you're a gem. Heck and Thank clean. you. Heck and I tried. Clean. Okay, your mask is done. Okay. You can put it back on. You duck under the table and slide it. <laughs> <laughs> I just raised my robe so no one can see. No one needs to. Better? <laughs> Better. Oh, good. So, like rosemary. Um, <laughs> you are all able to enjoy an absolutely fantastic meal. The, the food here is well seasoned, it's well cooked. <gasps> Everything about the Seven Silver seems amazingly pleasant. Considering the horrors and trials you have been through over the past week now, um, this is a, a slice of luxury. Um, just warm company, laughter, people drinking ale, toasting mugs. There's some, there's some farmers playing knuckle bones over in the corner. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a pleasant forest tavern. The and, nicest uh, meal we have had in the, about a week. <laughs> the, the, the windows are, are flung open and a cool autumn breeze is blowing in. And uh, the night couldn't be better. Ah, oh, I miss autumn. Nicholas takes a toothpick through this slit in his <laughs> mask. <laughs> <laughs> enjoys um, it. So, um, the meal has been cleared away. The the pudding was brought out. It was delicious. Um, it was like a uh, uh, a caramel uh, treacle, uh, and it was fantastic uh, with like burnt honey sugar all over it. It was it was delicious, uh, and lots, okay? of, lots of oh, lots of only has loosened her pants. Lots of lots of. <laughs> <laughs> lots of lots of nutmeg. It's definitely eating like she's been in a big family. Just oh. <laughs> and uh, all of you are kind of relaxing with your last dregs of ale, um, and uh, thoughts of bed are starting to float into your mind uh, when, quite suddenly, oh God, oh dear. there is a commotion outside. You hear a horse kind of. And the doors fling open, and uh, the doors open up, and it's uh, Arnama. Is she okay? <clears throat> she looks fine. Okay. She looks winded. She's she's she kind of comes in, Did throws she? her head around, sees you up at the table, and strides right up. Um, Holga, seeing this urgency and knowing her for as long as he has, slowly rises as he yeah. sees her approaching. Yeah. Uh, uh, Uptal, who, by the way, fell asleep about 30 minutes ago and is Good currently snoozing in his chair, um, 
is uh, is is taking a nap, and uh, Arnama comes up to all of you and says, "Oh, I shake him as she is." She says, "I think I have what you're looking for, oh, and uh, you might want to come with me right now." Okay. To uh, <laughs> keep things civil, and you notice that Asina uh, and and her wife, uh, who uh, after business have kind of died down, the two of them are sitting at the tavern together, enjoying uh, their late supper. Uh, they still get up and serve folks, but they're they're currently enjoying their late supper. But both of them have turned and are looking with some interest as to what's going on. I get my holy uh, symbol up, and I'm like, I'm ready, let's go. <laughs> and uh, when you start doing that, they they stand up and are like, Is there is there trouble? Don't, shh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Enjoy a meal, and she tries to very like casually walk out the door, like nothing is wrong. Don't look at me, and then hurries the last bit. <laughs> All right, uh, so uh, you uh, escort Arnama outside, and uh, she's lovely. got she's got a, uh, a a kind of very pale tan riding horse outside that she's just loosely tied up uh, out front, and it's all a froth, as if she rode it here hard, and uh, and she's like. Uh, she gets you out where, like, you're far enough away from the front door where no one can hear you. She kind of pulls you off around the side where there aren't windows open, and she's like, they're out there all right. Is it bad? Uh, th- yeah. How I many these we? Uh, well, you could say that there's a, there's a bit of undead making their way here. Uh, there's a whole horde of them in the forest to the north. They seem to be wandering aimlessly, trying to follow some trail. I don't, I don't know. It seems <laughs> oh! like they might be trying to follow you. <laughs> Yeah, How many welcome. days out would you say they are? Uh, at the rate that they're moving, probably we've probably got a few, maybe two. Two days. But I gotta tell you this, they're not the problem. The problem is the outriders that spotted me on my way back to town, and they oh. are hot the on my heels. We gotta go take care of them now before okay. they ride down on the town. Wait, someone get the mayor. He can come and watch us destroy them. Mm. Our defender. She country. looks at you and says, we don't have time for that. Oh, we okay. need to go deal with them now. They okay. they should be here any moment. Lead the way, oh, lead God. the way. All right, Ready? run to the gate. So, yeah. so she <laughs> escorts cool. all six of you. You left Mayor Uptil behind. He's still in his chair, by the way. When you left, you kind of went. <laughs> After mm-hmm. literally shaking him, going, Joe, wake up. Hey. Joe. Yeah. He, he kind of he kind of he kind of just goes. Uh, yeah, d- 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 don't send the kids. Okay, in that <laughs> case, in that case, when we when we were leaving the tavern before we got this information, yeah. Um, Holgas says, uh, the, the, the tab. And, 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 Asina just looks at you and goes, yeah, I mean, he's not good for it, but yeah. <laughs> the six of you now go rushing out to the west gate. What time of day is it? It's oh, it's like eleven o'clock at night. Ooh, you, you had, you had lights still on, or day? There are some, but it's, it's, it. So what happened was, as, 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 as dusk set, everybody lit lanterns outside their house. It was kind of this quaint little forest community. But as the night progressed, some of those lanterns burned out, and some of them were extinguished. And now there's only scant lights here and there. There's a few folk ambling about on, on, uh, you know, heading home from the bar or heading home from a friend's house or something. But there's very few people out at this point in time. Yeah. And you make your way out to the west gate. And the west gate, uh, just like the the north gate, has a tower, but there's not even a guard in it. Mm-hmm. And sure. um, right along the way, while running to the way, to the gate, I'm just going to be shouting, "Everyone, get to the church! <laughs> We're under attack!" Because it's the only building made of stone, and they need to get out of their their mm-hmm. so, wood house. So you start shouting at, running, at people in the street, and they're 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 just kind of looking at you funny, and some start ambling towards the church. But they're, 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 they 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 look in a panic, but they also are like, why are there why are there crazy people running through their town, mm-hmm. uh, yelling about undead? So they look concerned. And I'm, I'm not saying that they're not responding, but they, they're they not having the level of urgency that you would That's think is okay. appropriate. That's okay, as long as they're near the church right. when they're inevitably attacked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I will say to one of them that might recognize me, um, mm-hmm. I will just say, oh, no, she's telling the truth. You might want to get some people down there. Mm. And then just keep moving. <laughs> so, uh, you make your way out to the west gate, and the west gate is currently closed. Arnama goes up to it and she's like, "I closed it, but they, they should be right behind me. You should probably ready yourselves. They could be they could be right out there." Can I climb ready? in the tower? Yeah. Uh, that's where Arnama. That's where Arnama is heading. She's heading up to the tower. I'll go up there. Oh, the tower. Um, uh, she has her bow and is climbing up to the tower. Um, so, if you're going to open up the gate, I want to know who's down at the gate. I want to know who's up in the tower. The tower can probably only hold 
three people comfortably, maybe probably, four. I, as somebody who's ranged, I should probably I be in the tower. I should probably go yeah. to the tower. I'm in tower. I'm but the, that's four of us, and I it, am small, but I don't know that, that The only thing yeah. that's tricky is that means one of you will be standing on the hatch, because it's like a 10-foot by 10-foot yeah. tower. Yeah. And yeah. I don't there's have a, to be in the there, tower. There's it a is, hatch, yeah. which means one person would have to stand on top of the hatch, which means no one can go in and no one can go out. Right. I won't. Okay. It's fine. I don't have to So, So tower. who wants to be in the tower? I I need. I am a ranged fighter. Uh, uh, Arnama would prefer to be in the tower. She because should that's definitely where be in the tower. She's most useful. I should also be there. All right. In which case, uh, if that's the case, then I'm not going to be in the tower. Because if I can give you two room to move up there if you have to... Because uh, it would be it would be a terrible thing if that tower went up and you guys didn't have a way down because we were jammed up there. But so if all, there are three of us, then we then you're can, fine. Yeah, we can. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Three, four of us. three is three is cozy, but but doable. Okay. Four is where you're in trouble because okay. someone's standing on the. Okay, cool. Three then. You three. Don't is seem everyone to take good up with that? Yeah, room. that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's true. I've been working out quite a bit oh, lately. Okay. I've been <laughs> sort of getting a little bit lean going. Lifting yeah. books doesn't count. All right, now. Damn it! Damn it! Um, so, uh, the rest of you are down at the gate. Mm-hmm. You open the gate? I, yeah, I'm going to be in front, like yeah. nose pressed against Does the gate. Does anyone want like, to ready. do, the, the last thing I want to ask you before you throw open the gate, uh, I, I know you all have weapons drawn. I'm not worried about that. Yes. Um, I, I, is there anything else anybody wants to do? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, Holgast, as we get up to the top, just goes, oh, I forgot my staff, and then reaches into his sleeve and starts pulling out this long wooden staff that's about <laughs> six feet long. He pulls it out and just slays it, puts it down, and then I'm going to uh, use, um, I have an ability that's that lets me strike this with this thing that like enhances its power. It's a feat, I believe. Yeah, so you have a feat. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dispel weapon. Uh, spell correct? weapon. Yeah. yeah, so what happens is every time you cast a spell, you can siphon off some of the energy and put it into the staff. But you right. have to cast a spell first. Okay, cool. So I'll have so to So you can by. just do that as you, yeah, yeah, as yeah, you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> is it, is it, can we see what's on the other side of the gate? No, yeah. no not okay. until the gate's open. Okay. Uh, mirror image. You cast mirror image. Yeah. All right. So there are now four of you. <laughs> um, and you're all kind of... Uh, actually, there's five of you, and you're all kind of rotate. No, four. It is four. Sorry. There's four of you kind of rotating around in, in the space, and it makes it really hard for people to be How able to tell who is cool. who. How long does shield last, my cantrip shield? So shield lasts for just one round, but the thing is it is only one action, so you can oftentimes cast a spell and, and then a cast a shield. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. And I can use a staff with one hand Correct. and shield. Yep. That's so cool. Uh, you I'm, don't even have to wield the shield. It just floats in front of you. Yes, do it. Yeah. So awesome. I'm prepared to cast Searing Light on the first thing <laughs> I see. Okay, right, so I'm going, going to make sure that she doesn't see me ever. <laughs> <laughs> don't I, get in my face. I face. hide in a barrel. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Hey, Claire, so, um, okay. you, are all, uh, you are all standing there prepared and ready. Anybody else want to do uh, anything else? <laughs> I would like to call on my family one last time. Oh. All right. <laughs> All right, so you're pre rage. You're, 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 you're pre raging. All right. Iculus wants to uh, obviously, he's going to pray to Shellen mm-hmm. uh, for protection. And then let's pick up a rock and just toss it over and just sees, just to hear anything right. that might happen. All right, so you, you throw a rock over the over the wall and uh, and you don't really hear anything. You hear the, the rock kind of fall on the other side. If they're right on the other side, it didn't it didn't hit them. And or there's anything, more than where that came from. Yeah. <laughs> How high is this gate? That's about it's about seven or eight feet tall. It's it's just oh. wooden planks. What do my right, I'm I going see? over. Yeah, what well, do I, I, I don't see? want to open well. it. That's a, seems like a come on in. Leave the gate short. Well, right? I mean, if you can well, cli- it. not everybody's going to be able to climb over it yeah. or, or get yeah. over if it. We so. buy, I'm yeah. certainly not climbing. My tower is hard enough. I can carry you. What do my keen eyes see? Yeah, all right. Um, So looking (laughs) out into the gloom, you see the forest uh, to the uh, west of town. And it's very dark out there. I mean, there isn't really any light. Um, You are a few days after the full moon, but it's pretty cloudy right now. So it's kind of hard to make out anything at all. Um, uh, Who's opening up the gate? I will. All right. Uh, So you, you throw the bar back and open up the gate. And uh, uh, you you are now able to see out in in down this this darkened path as mm-hmm. well, and as you kind of stand there for a moment, just getting ready, that's when you spot them, and you spot them because they are charging at you hard. There are a pair of skeletal knights mounted on 
skeletal horses, and they are charging toward the gate at full speed. They are, they are in a full gallop the moment that gate is open, and they come charging out of the gloom. And as they make their way close, there is something else looming up behind them. <laughs> there is a large skeleton. It looks mm -hmm. like it's about nine feet tall. It looks like it might have at one point in time had the body of a man but the head of like a bull, and it has horns. Uh, and it comes striding forth, bearing this giant axe, and it looks like it is um, covered in blood. It is a skeleton that is dripping with blood, and it is stomping up behind the two skeletal knights who have gone charging forward. And at that, I'm going to need everyone to roll initiative. Scout's warning. All right. Since I was How holding fast searing light, can I let it go now? No, no? not quite. But uh, <gasps> so what's going to happen is uh, for everyone, this is going to be a just a perception check. Uh, just go ahead and roll the number and hold it for me. And then I'm going to come around and ask you what you have. Okay. Oh, sure, I've got okay. my okay. my friends here. All right. <laughs> I'm so ready. So am I. No. All right. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let me go around the table and get everyone's initiative. Tario, uh, what do you have? 18. Uh, Liz, what do you have? 26. <laughs> uh, Linnaeus. 30. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I mean, I guess that's an initiative you can have. I guess it's an initiative. Iculus, what do you have? 15. 15. There's my champion initiative. Uh, <laughs> omelet. Not 20 with 32. Ooh, 32. Oh my God. All right. And Holgast. 40. No, sorry. What? Sorry. No, no, no. Ni 19. <laughs> 40. No, 19. Th those 19. are a little different than each other. All right. I was thinking of the last time that I got to dance with someone. Oh, 40 no. years old. It was a good time. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I don't miss it. <laughs> Your hips are made of chalk. It's All right. Um, <laughs> so, um... <laughs> The uh, skeletons are coming charging out of the darkness. There are a pair of skeletal knights on horses, and behind them is what is best to be described as a giant skeleton. A uh, bloody a, minotaur skeleton. A bloody <laughs> giant <laughs> minotaur skeleton. Not the stuff of nightmares at all. It's no, it's fine. This is this fine. Is, this is fine. We, just all want, of, we heard about the seven silvers. <laughs> we just want to come back. Hey, can I get some more? All right. We're gonna start combat with Omelette. Omelette, it is your turn. Remember, you get three actions on your turn. What would you like to do? Sure, how far away are they? So the charging knights are closer. They're about 50 feet away, 50 feet. Uh, which puts them uh, at about the tree edge, right? If you're looking at the map, you guys are at the gate. They're about the, at the tree line. Mm -hmm. the, the skeletal uh, giant is about 30 feet behind them. So it's about 80 feet away. Are they pretty fast? The knights are charging real fast. They are on. They are on horses. They are on skeletal horses. Oh wow! Um, mm -hmm. And they have lances out. Oh boy! All right. Well, uh, I assume I have to sudden charge then to get near them. Uh, yeah. If you sudden charge, you can sudden charge right up to one of them as they're as they're riding down on you. The you moment can just I run don't up and slam make eye contact them. with their negative sockets, <laughs> I start running for their stupid faces. Yeah, it's hard to make <laughs> eye contact with them. They don't have eyes. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I, I run their vacant pupils. All right. And uh, I, I start swinging. All right. Um, so you go charging up, you go bolting out of the gate before anybody else can even react and go running straight up at this knight that is charging straight at you. Oh, yeah. And just come slamming into meter. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you brought an axe to You're a You're mounted on your rage. <laughs> I'm so, mounted on rage because I tried to mount Starlight. It didn't go very no. well. That needs to be a t shirt. <laughs> I'm, I'm mounted <laughs> on rage. The, no, the, um, the, 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 you brought an axe to a joust fight. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So, my question is. Before you tell me what number you got, sure. are you attacking the rider or the mount? Uh, Don't feel bad, it's oh, probably you mean a skeleton. like the horse or something? You, are you attacking the horse or the rider? Don't feel bad, it's probably a skeleton horse. Oh, it, it is. is. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's quite grotesque, yeah. as it were. Uh, well, uh, I suppose, tactically, I would be cutting out the... the, the well, really want to ride that grotesque horse though. <laughs> but I don't think it would like me very much. So with a with a lance straight at my face, I suppose it would be more of a sort of ducked undercut to get rid of its the horse. speedness so that right. it can't get closer to the Great. to the keep. Alright. Um so aiming for the horse there. Great. Uh what did you get? 
Uh, I got a 30. A 30 is a critical hit. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you go yeah. charging forward, slamming your ax right into the horse's uh, like sternum, shattering bones. All right. So 15. 22 damage nice. uh, that of before positive you, energy. Is that before you double? That's before I double. So you so do 44 f- damage of positive rage. <laughs> <laughs> so you run straight up to this horse, slam your ax right into its sternum, and the entire skeletal horse just shatters. <laughs> the whole thing just blows apart and the bones go rolling and shattering and bouncing down the path about another about another 20 feet. That's how much speed carries it. The knight on top of it goes flying. He goes yeah. flying right past you. As it goes and flying, lands on I, the ground. I take a quick swing at him again for my final movement. Yeah, technically, yeah, you can you can take I a still reverse have swing. Him, like yeah. a baseball. Yeah. Yeah. And I, then, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> if I hit, we'll see. <laughs> yep. Whole gas is going to whisper off to the side. Whoever's standing near to him goes, I'm going to start eating my eggs. <laughs> <laughs> She's magnificent, is she not? Yeah. <laughs> 25. A 25 to with, hit. Uh, with the penalty already. To, to hit the knight. Um, that will hit. It's not a critical oh, hit, but that yes. does hit. Yeah. Like a baseball. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Them some numbers. Mm-hmm. 21. 21. All right. Your uh, your sword doesn't Positive. have as good of an effect against the uh, skeletal knight. It, it didn't have as good of an effect against the horse, but you also did. Massive overkill. Um, <laughs> so um, the the knight takes damage, and uh, he kind of rolls past you as he uh, slams into the ground. He is prone because his mount was literally destroyed underneath him. It wasn't even slain. He couldn't even ride it down to the ground. It's just gone. It's, it's just like, like riding something that just vanishes. And uh, so he he goes rolling to the ground. Um, that is the end of Omelette's turn. Linnaeus. It's such a cinematic moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, how Imagine. far away is this... Big boy from me. The big boy is about 70 feet away. Ho ho, guess what? Searing light. Has a range of? 120. Ah, you got me. Uh-huh. All right. uh-huh. uh, you're in my range, buddy. Okay, so you're going to unleash searing light on him. Uh, you're I going to need to. Sixes. How much do you need? Two more. Oh. Uh, these two. Uh, you need to make an attack roll first, correct? Um, spell attack. Yes, it is. Yep. Range spell attack roll, oh my god. No, not that one. Never mind. That one's been bad to me. Please be nice. Please be nice. Oh! (laughs) (laughs) You said please be nice twice. Yeah. It's a 30. A 30 is a hit. It is not a critical hit. It's okay. It was a 19, so you know, I'm going to take it. That's scary. That's scary, though. So, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 of fire damage alone. All right. And then, and then, because he's undead, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 21, good damage. You are so violent. Uh, So, uh, 20 points of fire damage, 21 points of positive energy damage. Okay. Yes. Uh, He takes uh, a good chunk of that. <laughs> How to instill doubt in your He's player? <laughs> Bones don't burn very well. Oh. All right. Um, so uh, the the light of Saren Ray lances through the night, just lighting up the entire path between the gate and the the giant. It slams into the giant, and this also illuminates the pair of additional skeletal champions. Uh, knights making their way through the forest. They're not mounted, they're on foot. But they are also coming in from the forest. But you you couldn't see them until that bright light lance illuminates them in the woods. Um, Shield up. So with your last last action, you you throw your shield up. Good call. All right. So, uh, let's see. The skeletons get to go. I'm sure it'll be fine. Can we politely ask them not to? Yeah. You can. can. (laughs) We 
Please, they no. they disregard they your request. They decline. Oh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm afraid, I, I completely. I'm afraid they that. are not interested in that tactic. That's fair. All right, so uh, here's what's going to happen: the one skeletal knight that is still on his horse is going to charge. Uh, let's see, who do I have down at the front the gate? The dwarf that exploded on the I horse. have... <laughs> I says a very tiny squishy one. There's a I champion the down there. Yeah. All right. There's four of you. Our frontliners. There, there is, is four, four of you. Of you. Yeah. Just so uh, you know. Not interested in that. Uh, <laughs> nope. He's coming after Iculus. Um, he comes charging straight forward. Lance leveled. Here it comes. Armor class, 26. 24. That is going to hit. Leave our uh, alone. And he is jousting, so he gets the extra jousting damage because that was a charge. Ridiculous. Just, oof. Uh, take 17 points of damage from the from the charge attack. Uh, the lance <laughs> slams into you, uh, dealing uh, tremendous damage. It hits you in the side, uh, just below your breastplate, oh. and uh, uh, blood is pouring out of your side. Uh, that was its charge action uh, and its first attack, and then it's going to take a second attack. Um, it uh, uh, is actually, sorry, it's not going to attack because it's holding the lance. It uh, spurs its mount to attack you. So the horse is going to attempt to hoof you. We're about to get hoofed. hoofed. Um, let's see. Uh, 17 Great. plus 9 is a 26, so that is going to land as well. Um and that is actually going to do 11 points of damage as the, the hoof uh, hits you in the shoulder. Ah, that was, that, that was not good. Tanking like you do. Yeah. Can you fix that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first one. The second skeletal knight uh, charges forward, but because it no longer has a mount, it has to spend two of its actions moving, and it is going to move straight up to uh, you. You're down on the ground, and you were the one who let loose that blast of holy light. Yeah, it, so it smells holiness it, on you. Yeah, it, it, it's and it's and it's it's not interested. So it's going to come running straight up to you and swing its longsword at Linnaeus. That's another seventeen. Jeez, my please. dice Can streak you continues. Not, though? Uh, Can you not? Twenty-seven armor class twenty-seven. I'm going to wager is a hit, a clean yeah. hit. Can I also point out this is the first damage I've taken? Well, in that case, take uh, eight. Okay. Yeah. Right. Take it, that's uh, fine. Not too much. <laughs> mm. It's fine. Eight. Oh. Okay. It's only eight. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. It's only eight. Um, we'll see what it's happens. It's also really hard to kill me. It's <laughs> yeah. really hard to kill me. Yeah. All right. Don't so, say that in front of the DM. He knows. <laughs> yeah. Is that a, is that a he challenge? Knows I'm a yeah. Don't say that in front of the GM. Don't say that in front of the GM. That sounds an awful lot like a challenge. All right. <laughs> I'm a die hard. It's fine. So, uh, the. Uh, that's the two uh, skeletal knights that that uh, were mounted. There are two more, but they have to move all the way up to get the gate. They spend their entire turn just doing that. They were a bit further back and in the woods, so they spend their entire turn just moving up to the gate. They are close, but they're not through the gate. So they're like a move away from anybody who's at the gate, but they're only like 10 feet away. Okay? Uh, and the last person to go is the skeletal giant. And it goes walking Right up to Omelette. Hello. <laughs> stomps. And as it stomps up, you can actually feel the ground shake. It's so big. And as it gets up to you, it takes this giant axe and just tries to slam it right down into you. Armor class, 29. Yeah. That's a, that's a... That makes contact. <laughs> <laughs> How much damage would that be? <laughs> All right, so it charged up and hit you, so it gets the plus four bonus to damage. Thanks. Uh, so that is going to do 18 points of damage as the axe slices into you. Could deeply. have been worse. Okay. Don't say that. <laughs> it's already happened. Might not I'm be already done yet, though. Attacked. It's kind of the boss fight. So. What is your will uh, yep, save? Yep, there it is. <laughs> I don't. You don't need to roll it. I need to know what it is. There it is. Because he's gonna. Uh, twelve. Twelve. 
All right. So it, uh, because of its uh, special attack, it did a terrifying charge, right? It came sure. up out of the darkness, lumbering at you and slammed it's this into you. Trying to freak me out. That's right. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a free intimidate check against you. Okay. And uh, I'm going to oh go boy, ahead and, and roll that. And that is only going to be a 16. You said your will save was a... 12. 12. So the, your will DC is a 22, which is oh. not enough. Right, yeah, 10 to make mm. it into a DC. Wait, you, so um, it attempts to terrify you using Intimidate, what does but it, do? it fails. What does well, it, do it with just me? it just bellows and snorts as it comes out of the darkness mm. and slams this axe into you. I'm, as I'm taking the hit, I pocket it. <laughs> uh, and as its last action, because that was its first two actions, oh. um, its, its final action is to throw its horns at you and attempt to gore you with its horns. Oh, Love to just latch onto that. Did you not critical hit? Oh my god! No, 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 no. See, no, no, no. when you said I would love to latch onto that, yeah, yeah that was. As it. it turns out, it lowers its head, throws a horn at you, and the sure. horn goes straight through you. Ow. Those of you behind it can see the horn pierce straight through uh, your dwarven barbarian. No, no, no. How much damage? Twenty-six points of damage. Can I uh, apply the liberating step here? No, she's too far away. Oh, she is. Oh. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Yeah, she's too far away. Uh, she is, uh, let's see, she's about 30 feet out. Um, no, sorry, she's 50 feet out. She's even too far away from your, for your I, spell. I supercharged. Oh, she's man. too far away. Um, sorry, I'm a Yeah, she went way too far out there. <laughs> All right. Um, so, <laughs> that's the end of the skeletons. Next up, Liss. Uh, Liz is up in the tower and sees this uh, gigantic fiend gore their friend, and uh, they mark that minotaur as their prey with their hunter's prey. All right. And uh, they are going to then use their hunted shot to take two shots. All right. So let's see how this goes. All right. You mark the uh, you mark the skeletal giant uh, as your prey. And fire. Uh, that would be a 26 to hit. A 26 does hit. Nice. And then I'm going to roll my 2d6 and my d8. Absolutely. Oh, wait. Uh, that would be 10 plus 6, 16 damage on the first hit. 16 damage, all right. And this is with an arrow, correct? So yes. it's a piercing damage. Yes. All right, that does, that's less effective because it is a skeleton, but. What arrow were you using, though? Oh, I just used my regular, regular ones. Okay. Uh, the second one is not going to hit with a 17 minus 5. 12. No, that's going to miss. And um, then I have a third action, I yep. believe, still. So I will do another hunted shot. Or wait, I can only use that once. I'll use a, I'll just do another regular shot. Regular attack. So this one's going to be at a minus 10. Correct. But, you know, roll real high and you might be able to hit. A 17 plus 14, which is a 31. 31. Minus 10 is a 21. A 21 is exactly what you needed to hit. Mm. <laughs> nice. Just barely. That's awesome. And that will be five more damage. Uh, five more total? Yes. That arrow skips off its bones and doesn't do anything at all. Mm. Lovely. Uh, next up is... Uh, our Nama. Yes. Uh, the ranger of my heart. <laughs> <laughs> our Nama uh, eyes up one of the uh, skeleton skeletons that has gotten really close to the town, but isn't yet through the gates. It's one of the two knights that came up out of the forest. She eyes up one of those. You see her sighted as her target, and she starts letting loose with arrows. Uh, the first one's going to be a critical hit. The second one is a miss. And the third one is going to be a hit. So she is going to do uh, that first arrow does 22. No, sorry, 28 doubled. Uh, so it's going to be dropped down to uh, 13. Sorry, not 13, 18. And then uh, the second one is going to do another. Ooh, 
Oh, that's it. That one crumbles to dust. Uh, her two arrows, the first one slams like straight because she's firing down at it. It like fires through its rib cage, shattering part of its hip. The second one slams it to, to on the other side and it just kind of collapses and falls to the ground. Um, and that's her, <laughs> that's her turn. Uh, next up, Holgast. <clears throat> I want to see what this egg can do when it's moving really fast. <laughs> All right. I'm going to cast haste on the dwarven. She, right. She's up there. So your range, your range, your range is thirty on that. So 30. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have, have to, to move, move and then do this. All right. So I'm gonna use a move action to get a little too close to combat for a wizard. Yeah. But I am going to throw. I'm gonna move up to my to my movement to get in range of her and throw down and and cast this from thirty feet away. All right. So here's what that's gonna do for you, uh, Omelette. You now yeah. on your turn yeah. get an extra. Uh, action okay. every turn. So instead of three, you get four. But the, the fourth one can only be used to move okay. or make a basic attack. You get can't do it. anything else with it. It's just move or make an attack. Okay. Yeah. I'm currently so, impaled right yeah. on it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and Holgas, that is going to be all of your turn. Because that's... Uh, Cast that's, the spell. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Holgas goes running out of the gate past the skeletal oh, knights, by the way, I and is an now idea. out there by <laughs> himself. Where are you uh, and as he moves his hands through the air, you see arcane symbols traced through the open sky that sizzle and burn with fire, and then uh, Omelet starts moving real fast. Tariel. Well, um, wiggling. <laughs> <laughs> I feel wiggly bitch. I feel strangely okay. All in, all, all, it's only effect right now is to force you to bleed much faster. Oh, all you're right, welcome. Um, no. <laughs> I'd take an extra action to bleed. <laughs> Wah, wah. <coughs> All Tariels lift up uh, their uh, violins. All right. And start playing at the same time for, to inspire courage. All right. And that hits everyone within 60? 60 feet. All right, so that's going to hit the entire party. Nice. nice. No. Even right. me? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Everybody gets a plus one bonus on attack rolls. And then uh, I'm going <laughs> to. You'll be doing a lot of that. Use my yeah. last. Two actions to cast magic missile. All right, so uh, you uh, throw up the inspire courage and work your your, your occult magic and uh, let loose two magic missiles. Who are you throwing them at? Um, I want to throw one. So there's a skeleton attacking Iculus, right? Yes, there's a skeleton in front of Iculus. That is the one that is uh, mounted, mm -hmm. uh, and it is still on its horse. It has uh, it has not been wounded at all, and neither has its horse. There is another skeleton that is on foot that is in front of Linnaeus. And then there is one more skeleton that is kind of just outside the gate. Remember, two came out of the forest. One of those two has been destroyed. Okay. It got destroyed by, uh, by uh, Arnama. Uh, and the other one is just drawing close. And then the last skeleton is the giant. Okay. Um, I'm going to hit the closest skeleton. Sure. And then I want to throw one at the giant. Okay. So you can totally do that. Uh, the closest one is probably the one that is fighting Linnaeus. Okay. Uh, and then, then the giant. Okay. Uh, the one so. fighting Linnaeus is going to take five points of damage. Okay. And then the Sweet. Giant is going to take four points of damage. Okay. Uh, so the one fighting uh, Linnaeus takes uh, five mm -hmm. from Magic Missile. So uh, it is badly hurt, but still up. The giant also takes five, and uh, it is. Four. Oh, four. So, uh, yeah, it is also you pretty. Can give it five if you want to. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'll go with four, uh, <laughs> but it's uh, but it is still it's still standing nonetheless. It does look pretty badly hurt, but it is still standing. Um, uh, and uh, so, interestingly enough, uh, the all of the blood that is coating it, that is all over it, it looks like its bones are slowly stitching back together. Like some of the bones that fell off, like kind of float back up and rejoin it as the as the oh, battle nice. is progressing. So uh, that was Toriel, Iculus. Nikki Less wants retribution. <laughs> Fair enough. So what I want to do is swing the uh, my sword at the horse. Yeah. And use for my first action, and then lay on hands for my second action. Okay. Um, onto the. Onto uh, the, the skeleton. Onto the skeleton. All right. Yeah. Great. 
All right. I'm going hard. Yeah, all right. So first swing into the horse. Let's let's do that and resolve it. Oof. It's a four. This is going straight to jail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, four plus, plus of the day. what, 12? Uh, yeah, four plus 12. So 16. Uh, 16 does still manage to hit, actually. Nice. The, the nice. horse isn't really armored or anything. Okay, so. cool. This one isn't. Um, and then do I have a... Let's see... So uh, you are going to get the extra d6 on this one okay. for your for your disrupting weapon. Cool. So that's a that's five plus the or no that's uh, no that's five. not going to be on that. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, the horse so we're uh, the horse was the last one to hit you, so you're going to get the retribution as well. So nice. it's whatever you got on the dice uh, plus four four yeah, so plus two plus two. Okay, yeah. that's eleven. 11 points of damage. Yep. All right. Uh, you deal 11 points of damage to the horse. Um, once again, not as much damage because it's a skeleton, but it still hurts it. Okay. Uh, that was your first attack. The horse is still up and fighting. Okay. Lay on hands on the skeleton, dude. All right. So uh, that's actually just a touch. So oh, okay. on that, I make a I make oh, a saving okay. throw. Oh, so I got oh, it. No. But you get to roll 3d6. That's how much damage you do. Okay. Anybody got any other? Yes, would you like to use my fireball? Oh, I see. Should have three, maybe. And, yeah. then, and yeah. the blue one. Oh, I see. Oh, there we are. Thank you. <laughs> we are here for you. Uh, that's five, that's seven, ten. He's undoubtedly going to fail the will save. He didn't critically fail. So okay. uh, this is against the, the knight? Yes. All right. How much damage? Ten? That's ten. You reach out and touch the skeleton, and as you do, it, uh, your hand flashes with holy fire. Mm -hmm. That fire spreads all over the skeleton, and uh, a bunch of its bones burn and blacken with, with holy light. It is still up. That does look like it hurt it pretty badly, though. Okay. Um, so that was two of your actions. You do still technically have a third. Okay. Um, I'm Swing coming, again. Coming back around. Horse or, horse or, the, horse or the knight? Um, I'm going to take the knight out. Well, you'll try. Oh, I will. Mm-hmm. Bring it. Shedlin comes down, shines her light <laughs> all around me, and on this die, oh. oh. Five, that's gonna be a 17. 17 total? Uh, yeah. Is that with the minus five? No. Oh, all right, so 12. Ooh. Yeah, no, not, not so much, mm -hmm. not so much. Uh, Shellen being the god of art and beauty and everything, I, I, I every time you pray to Shellen before swinging a yeah. sword, I'm, I'm just picturing you're doing the art of murder. Yeah, it's, uh -huh. it's, yeah, it's like it's an art. Yeah, it no, is it is. An art. Yeah. She's yeah. just like, why are you talking to me? She's like, yeah, this is what you. This, yeah, this is, not, is not my domain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, smashy time. All right, uh, so that was that was that was Iculus. Uh, top of the order, mm. omelet. Okay, so. Just remind me, I'm still currently impaled on a horn. Uh, no, actually, after it impaled you, it pulled its head back. Oh, and so the goodness, the horn out slid air. out, and as it did, it made a really wet popping noise Ugh. that you're sure is really good. Mm, great. Yeah. 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 Okay, and he's still sort of next to me. Yeah. He's still right on top of you. Great. Yeah. Uh. I'm going to drink a healing potion. <laughs> I'm going to. Like, so, just sort of, I just sort of. So, getting out a healing potion and drinking it is going to take you two seven. actions. Oh, and God. to top it off, if he can take advantage of attacks of opportunity and you don't know that he can, that would provoke. Okay. Mm. Question. Yes. You know of a potion that I have that's a little different. Would that negate an attack of opportunity? Potion that you have that's a little different. Oh, that one. Uh, uh, no, that would no. just give you. That would give him a chance to miss, but uh, it wouldn't negate it automatically. Right. Yeah. Right. If you had drank it beforehand, Wait, it would give you a better I chance. Run away, but he's still gonna get a chance to attack me. <laughs> so. Well, you're also in a rage, so doing any I, I strong do anything, thinking isn't really think your. I'm yeah. Sort of. I, I don't have control of my body. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. So no matter how many times I keep trying to run away, my axe is literally cemented in my hand and already swinging. Yeah, the spirits are speaking for you, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, go ahead and make an attack. All right. Oh, what am I doing? That's not even... About to roll 2d20s. Remember your haste <sighs> Torak. I know that just means I've... I, I get you, plus one. Mm -hmm. And I just get four actions. You get four actions. One can be used for another attack or a move. Yeah. Yeah. So you can go choppy, choppy, choppy. And then bolt and, and then hit. see you later. <laughs> yeah. And then choppy. 
Okay. <laughs> more, awesome. more choppy. More, always more choppy. Yeah. All right. I <coughs> would try. <coughs> <coughs> the rage is literally a thing I cannot not do. No. That. It's not mm. great, but it's not the worst thing in the world. What do you got? That's a 24. 24 is a 25. hit. 25. 25. It's a hit. It's not a critical hit, but it is a hit. Okay. Maybe I can just kill this thing before. That's one way to solve the problem. Okay. <laughs> okay. Not bad. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. Twenty-six. Twenty-six points of damage. All right, that's, that's gonna get nice. Good clap back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you made me asthmatic. Just Damn dishes. You. All right. You slam your axe into the the the, the Minotaur's blood covered bones, and as you do, it, you hear kind of a cracking, splintering noise. And as it begins to fall apart, the necromantic it. energy holding it together is just unleashed. And instead of just falling apart, it explodes. Oh! Its bones go blowing out in every direction like shrapnel. <laughs> um, and you are just pierced over and over again by oh. bits of bone. Can you make me a reflex saving throw? I'm but, coming. I have a question. Yes. Because I moved up with, to be within 30 feet of this thing. Oh, hold on. What is my range on that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it is... It's only adjacent creatures uh, take okay. damage. Yeah, everyone who's further away is. You get you get hit with like shards of bone, but that's it. It's oh, and, my beard. and by the way, its skull goes spinning through the air and like lands in front of the town of Cassin, one of its horns oh, digging into yeah. the ground and it's just sitting there and its jaw is still kind of moving and mm. blood is dripping. And out that's it. how the game right, is well, invented. As Omrit's about to make a witty retort as a victory, it's just, well now you see what... <laughs> 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 this is what you get for blowing up all these skeletons. Oh boy. Well, I think Oh boy. Okay. Nice. Okay. Not bad. Oh, that's, at a, all. That's, a, that's, a, that's a 28 right there. Yeah. So 28 is going to make it. Oh god. <laughs> uh, so uh you are only you're gonna take half damage, which is only five. Ha! Yeah. So you neo this thing. Yeah, you like dodge some of the bigger, <laughs> bigger shrapnel pieces, but they are they, they it just blows up, and there are bits of like blood covered bone flying everywhere. Uh, so uh, you to you hear supplies. just behind you after the explosion, the, you hear Holgas going, <laughs> <laughs> "Better than fireworks." <laughs> <laughs> so using the the the, the, the axe feel like, like a body shield and just, <laughs> <laughs> just spin it. <laughs> <laughs> you still have three, three more actions. actions. Yeah. How many more yes. of those things are at rage? There's, there's, I can't but they're stop all over fighting. Here. They're, they're, sure. Oh, there's so, two out there. So oh, no. the 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 giant skeleton that was the only one of those. Great. And uh you can now spend your next action as your haste action to move if you want. Okay. Um which could get you up to let's see, you're about oh, you moved way out to fight the, the fifty feet you said. Yeah, you're fifty feet out. Um, so yeah, you have to spend probably two moves to get back to the skeletons that are back near the door. I'll run to Linnaeus. <laughs> All right, you go. I've got a hole, so <laughs> both hands are here, but she's sort of running with her elbows, sort of <laughs> keeping the wound closed making because sure the haste out. is also making her feel a bit woozy now. <laughs> um, so she's sort of running like this <laughs> towards the, z- the, the skeletons. <laughs> Which hasted of- must look absolutely <laughs> like a Hanna Barbera <laughs> cartoon. It's, it's leaving because she's not covering the hole in her back. It's leaving like this spray no, of blood trail. like a sprinkler oh behind her. God. All right, so you go bolting back up. <laughs> And the weapon is just sort of has a mind of its own and swinging wildly in front of her as she's trying to keep her wounds closed. You go bolting back up. The skeleton <laughs> uh, that is facing off against Linnaeus is there. You are now flanking it and can attack. Great. <laughs> okay. Mm. 20. Is that minus the five? With the five. Oh. Or wait, yes, yes, yeah. with the five. With the five off, which is going to hit because of the flank. All right, Yoink. so go ahead and deal damage. Wait, did you add your one to it? That's with the one. It was going to be a 19, mm-hmm. and then I was like, right. 
One more. Mm. <laughs> And two. 22. 22 points of damage. Um, that is reduced a little bit. The skeleton looks very badly hurt by that, but it is still up. Uh, Linnaeus. As I'm just, as a, as a way that I'm using positive energy, I'm just like, Linnaeus, I'm positive, I'm bleeding out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Right. I've got you. I'm going to use my healing font. Do I have a hole in me? Yes, you do. I'm going to heal it. I don't like this many holes in me, Linnaeus. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many holes. I can fix one. Oh. So many t-shirts. How many? Um, <laughs> yeah. That's my new catchphrase. With you? <laughs> Everything. Okay. Too many uh, considering holes. Considering your other catchphrase, you <laughs> hold first my. Oh, there it is. Considering your other okay. catchphrase. Okay. So my healing font explodes in a thirty-foot radius around. So me. hold on. What? <laughs> you must cast the heal spell, which you do in front of the skeletal knight. Oh, but it has of attack of opportunity. You're throwing down a spell right. So the you okay. attempt to <laughs> you attempt to manipulate the magic, and it sees the weakness in your defense, and its blade comes sliding out at you. Sure. Do I still have my shield bonus, or did I have to move my shield to cast my healing? Uh, at the start of your turn, if your shield was up, it, it is was... automatically lowered. You you oh. at the start of, you have to spend an action every round. So its blade comes dashing out at you, but I rolled a three. Oh! So no! it comes short. Go ahead and roll and now, your, now roll your damage. Or your healing. Twenty. You get twenty. 20. You get twenty. Dice. You get twenty. You get twenty if you need Love it. it. You get twenty if you need it. I'll just put it in my You pocket. all take twenty points of damage. Get out. <laughs> so the skeleton in front of you, its blade got a lashing <laughs> its blade lashing out at you. The reason it misses is the holy fire washes over it and it crumbles to ash. Its blade just goes <laughs> sailing through the air as it crumbles to the ground before it. That was both Fine. of those. Noise. Um, Feel better? Uh, the other one just Little crumbled team. as well. You that one's too? dead. The oh, only oh, oh, oh. the only one that may be still alive, and I need to roll its saves to see if it is, is the uh, skeleton that is fighting Iculus and its horse. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and roll that. The skeleton ex <laughs> crumbles to dust. Yes. That's it for it. The skeleton champion goes, and the horse. Uh, he is going to make it and is down to uh, that. The Holy Fire washes over it, but it resists some of it. It is still up. All that's left is the horse. And it's the horse's turn. You could try to ride it. With a strange <laughs> malevolence, it attempts to stomp uh, Iculus into the ground. But you just got 20. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and Iculus is like, yeah. Whoa. So that, that did heal everyone for twenty. Jesus, everyone was hurt. Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, the horse tries to stomp you. Uh, the first one's going to be a miss, though. That's only a seventeen. That's not going to hit your AC. Second one is a natural twenty, it is. Uh, which is going to succeed. Its hoof comes stomping down on you, dealing fourteen points of damage, uh, slamming into your shoulder. And then its third strike is a clean miss. It just goes off. Uh, it's hooves, sir. Okay. It's just kind of reeling back, trying to stomp you into the ground. Liss, uh, yes, there's only uh, one creature left. I will move my hunter's oh. prey All right. over to that one as my first action, and sure. then I will take my hunted shots. All right, go ahead. Not to be that kid in class, but uh. didn't you say my searing light showed us two more in the forest? They they ran up, and you've been dealing with them. Oh, That's that was oh that you've okay. been dealing with. Oh. I was focused yeah. on the big one. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, they 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 just they just crumbled to dust. Actually, I just rolled a natural twenty. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, Love oh. It. get out of here, horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that would be a natural twenty with that one. So I'm going to roll this. <laughs> oh, and it's a deadly deadly shot. So, <laughs> so many dice. So many dice. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Ooh. Um. Let's see. That's a. Four, ten. Uh, which one of these? This one doesn't. The the yes. the ten doesn't double. Right. Yeah. Um, it's four. Uh, sorry, I'm um, nine. That's eighteen plus six. All right, your arrow goes streaking down like a thunderbolt, slamming into the horse's head and shattering its skull. It collapses to the ground, and the fight is over. It can <laughs> <laughs> so much. I'm, I'm immediately mean, running I, to you to the heal. I'm right next to you. The, the ghostly mist around me that usually Thank dissipates you. sucks back 
really quickly into her uh, armor, and she just falls. Oh no! I can I can fix this. Please tell me I'm, someone from the town saw that. Did it? I don't well, know, there's a giant head mm-hmm. in the middle of the square. Yeah, we do have so that. Yeah. Um, let me just, sh- let me heal you. We have the yeah. head, we have still the horses. A couple of oh. these have not been burned into mm-hmm. ash, so I think we have some decent evidence here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to do a fast medicine check on her. Did Can you I- see that? All right. We're amazing. Uh, <gasps> I'm yeah, go yeah. go ahead and make the check. Yeah. And I'm going to head down the tower and start running towards Colvin's place. A lot of blood. Sure. Um, mm. Our Nama... Uh, comes down, breaks a rope out of her pack, ties it around one of the Minotaur's uh, horns, uh, and it, it's still like oozing blood, and it's still kind of vaguely moving. It's clearly dead, but it, the the foul necromancy that animates it still makes its jaw kind of bite and <laughs> snarl. It's like the backwash and, of necromancy still yeah. splashed on this thing. <laughs> and and uh, and and she kind of she kind of. Uh, gets a gets it uh, the thing on a rope and tugs it till it comes up out of the ground and she's like, "Will this do?" Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. That is so perfect. Hopefully. I am hopefully. going to find Colvin now. Better he come here than mm-hmm. you have to drag that thing across the city. I'll be right back. All right. Maybe the townspeople need to see that. <laughs> I just got a fifteen and then a fifteen here. Ooh. All right. I just oh, fifteen I more. Just hit the DC. All right. <laughs> yeah. So. What happens next happens in relatively rapid succession. You go find Colvin, and he, upon seeing your evidence, is like, we have to call a council meeting now. And uh, he goes rushing off to the hall. Soon thereafter, it takes about an hour to get the council assembled, unfortunately. So it's, the uh, it's, it's, it's almost it's midnight. I'm going to lock the gate. So, uh, well, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, after an hour, the council gathers, and you're all uh, asked to come and give testimony. Uh, obviously, hanging from the rafters in the middle of the room is a swinging, blood-drenched minotaur skull that is still vaguely moving. The uh, Mayor uh, Ventner looks at all of you with some amount of irritation and disdain, uh, but defers to the council, who unanimously votes to begin emergency preparations. They are incredibly concerned, uh, and Colvin is tasked to be the representative that coordinates with you to help prepare the town. Great. So, to keep things light and moving along, uh, Arnama explains to the council that there are two days before this undead horde will land upon the town. That's what she thinks. Give or take half a day, Mm -hmm. but two is her best guess. Which means the town only has two days to prepare. It's too f- there are far too many uh, elderly and, and farmers to ever hope to outrun an undead horde. You were barely able to manage it with the small group of refugees that you had. With, a, with an entire town, you would undoubtedly be overrun and consumed. The council votes that their best plan of action is to fortify the town and wait out the oncoming storm using whatever soldiers and troops they have available. They immediately begin conscripting uh, various farmers and townsfolk to wield weapons, anyone able-bodied, and start forming a ragtag militia. However, the one thing that they don't have very much experience with, and they turn to you experienced soldiers, uh, is how should they fortify the town? Run away! (laughs) Unfortunately, there is no time for that, and there are way too many people here for that. I agree. How many people can fit inside the church? In the church, if probably we can... all of them. I imagine. I imagine they would have made it big enough to accommodate as many people. From How them. many people it looks are like in this, this town? It looks like when this church was built, that may have been true. Uh, when the town was probably a lot smaller, but there's no way they could fit everybody inside the church. Um, no. How much? How, what, what would be the process of, of blessing or creating holy water? So the uh, the uh, town priest can right. begin working on that, but it's not an incredibly fast right. process. Mm-hmm. That said, he does have a font that currently <clears throat> is full of holy water, so there's some there. Because we've learned that, that fire does hurt them, but it ain't as mighty as you might expect because mm-hmm. we're looking at boned creatures here, right? Absolutely. So uh, just oh. to, to learn what lessons we ha- we can from watching undead hordes attack castles, mm-hmm. let's, let's, I'm thinking like some kind of... Uh, Holgas is thinking some kind of 
Yeah. Oh, can so, you bless the water? So it's too much water. Uh, yeah. The Why next the river is a little bit the next much. the next oh. morning, mm-hmm. you have all gathered at the temple because you had the idea mm-hmm. of maybe bringing everybody here and at least you would come here to visit with the refugees and try and figure out a plan. You discovered the holy water there. Mm-hmm. And as you're sitting there talking, a small the door opens and a, a, a pretty short guardsman comes in. Mm-hmm. Comes flopping up. Yes, Guard work. Lieutenant Gelby reporting to help fortify the town. Gelby is about two feet tall and is a goblin. Oh. Mm. Now the skeletons will know pain. <laughs> How can I help? I'm here to help requisition stuff and find things. That's what I'm good at. It is a Oh, okay. oh you All know, right. I've had an idea. I need an Abrams too. I've had an idea. <laughs> We're going to make bombs. 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 Well, grenades. Our town's made of wood. I know, but not with fire. Oh, all right. <laughs> We're going to get a bunch of glass vials, as many as we possibly can, fill them with holy water, and we can throw them because they do damage to everyone within an area. They've splash damage. We can like make some idea. water bills. Sure. A holy bomb. Yes. Holy bombs. Uh. The father says, I, I, I can work on creating those. I, I do have some holy water, and, and we can I can use it to help the town. It sounds like this is a serious problem. Can we draw some water from the river and bless that as well? It takes time, and it, it takes some of my, my it takes a, a, a magical ritual to create holy water. It's not simply water that I bless. That's mm-hmm. that's not that's not enough. It, it requires what special if, unguents. What if we helped? What, what if, if we, we helped? Here? He, he, he looks at, at the two of you and he says, well, of course your, your help would be greatly appreciated, but there are, there are many ways that you might be able to assist, I'm sure. And Gelby's like, sure yeah. is. All of our gates are pretty terrible. And uh, wow, one section of our wall is about to fall down, actually. I would and be happy. No if one's you know, even looked at the ballista in like two years. Is it a ballista? Oh, there's two who, of them. Who has, oh. the to, who has the ability to do some crafting to help with that? Uh, well, my family's been doing sort of crafting work as long as I can remember, but more for stone. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't work with wood. Not a craft. Craft. I can help with crafting. I can help, craft. What if we got the ballista bolts Perfect. and we covered them in holy water? Well, I mean, it's that a, it's a siege weapon, and we have a big forest in front of us, right? So let me, let me ask, like, what good would the ballista do? Well, Unless I mean, it was facing the farm. The, the town originally got him to help defend the riverway, you know, That's from barges right, and stuff. Right. But, I mean, you know, if there's big targets or something, we could shoot at big things. See the Minotaur. Mm-hmm. We're, We're going to splash some holy water on all of those bolts. Mm-hmm. I, would, I would say that since we have a forested path leading straight up to the west gate, why don't we cut down some of those trees and block oh, up the path? That's very smart. We should have some of the, the farmers do that. I'm sure they have some experience with that. Is there anything? I also believe that digging trenches and perhaps right. uh, diverting the river a little bit to create a water yes. barrier around uh, some of our gates would possibly be a good So idea. to turn this into a little bit of a mini game, here's how this works. We've got this great map here mm-hmm. for us to explore. You all have have two days. Each one of you can decide to work with townsfolk. Lieutenant Gelby can help you requisition troops and people. Gelby knows where everything is. Gelby is is very helpful. Gelby refers to Gelby in the third person. I like Gelby. Gelby is, everybody in town kind of looks at Gelby kind of funny. Gelby's the only goblin you've seen in town. Goblins are, are pretty uncommon in towns, but they, they've started showing up. And uh, Gelby apparently joined the, the militia. Uh, uh, but Gelby knows where everything is, so Gelby can help out. Um, so each one of you can decide to undertake various tasks. Gelby suggests, well, we could build barricades, like out of wooden spikes and stuff. We could, uh, we could fortify gates. Uh, we could repair those ballista. Um, there's also the bridge. I mean, that's a that's a weak spot in town. I, I, um, I would say that uh, if it is possible for us to rebuild <clears throat> the bridge with all of these skilled woodworkers, I think for you it would take not much time. Why don't we just destroy it? Wait, quick question. Don't what, need what, it. What direction are they coming from? They're coming from this direction. The yes. north. The north? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, so they're coming from the other they're side? They're coming yeah. from the tiny, oh, but so, they could oh, come around Oh, so they've us. got to cross know. the river then. Yeah, but they so could I come around So I think destroying us. the bridge is probably a good idea. You have plenty of woodworkers mm-hmm. who can quickly I mean, rebuild it after. So, yeah, so, and the so, other guys came from that way. And, and this gets to the little <clears> minigame. Each one of you gets to pick 
a task that you think will help the town. I each know. day, you get to pick one task. So I'm going to go around the table twice, and each one of you gets to decide on what task you want to undertake. That's up to you. And your skills will determine how effective it is. So try and do something that's useful. But to be honest, even if you don't have great skills for it, you can still try. You might just not get huge benefits. Mm -hmm. Every little bit will help. So there's building barricades. There's reinforcing doors. There's repairing the uh, ballista. I heard you talking about rigging the bridge to collapse or collapsing it in advance. Uh, either one would work, but uh, if there is a way that we can safely collapse it so that it is not completely destroyed, then I would love to see how we can do that. Yeah, you can but also. But I think uh, I think just going ahead and, and knocking it out uh, to begin with is probably the safest way. Just to completely get rid of that way to cross. There's also <laughs> things like uh, helping to train the militia, working with the townsfolk, or anything that you might come up with. We can figure out whether or not it helps. So as you build barricades and defenses, we've got a silver pen here that's going to allow us to draw on the map where you're putting those so we can figure out what we're doing. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the table and just ask what it is that you want to do. And uh, Liz, I'm going to start down with you because it seems like you have a you have an idea of what you want to do first. I do. The very first thing that I want to do is I want to use my survival to start blocking off these uh, these kind of walkways into the city, the sort of clearer paths, sort of sure. make a nice little jumble of trees and underbrush and stuff to sort of uh, make their way more difficult. So before you start marking it. Yeah. We'll, we'll do some checks first. Mm -hmm. You want to start with the north path first, yes. I would assume? Okay. So go ahead and give me a survival check. If uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I know what the DC is. If you mm -hmm. succeed, you can easily uh, block up uh, two of the of the four paths. God, are you serious? Um, that would be a 21. All right. So with that roll, you're able to block off two of the paths. And it sounds like... Uh, I would like to do the north path and the west path. All right, so go ahead and just put some X's on the path uh, to indicate that that is all blocked up. Uh, the west is that uh, one. The other one, so yeah, why don't you hand the, right the... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, don't be shy. Feel free to make those those nice and big. All right, who else has an idea for how they might fortify the town? I do. Linus, what do you got? Uh, so in between sleeps, I'm going to take mending. Right. I'm going to go to both of the ballistas and try and mend them as best as I can and then right. find anything else in town that I can mend. Sure. And then I'm going to drench those bolts in holy water. As much okay. As I can. Well, so first of all, you uh, go with Gebli to go find the ballista. And they're, they're kept in a warehouse down by the river. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you uncover them, and they're in pretty bad shape. So mending will certainly help. That's going to work out great. That that means that in one day you can fix both of them. Because otherwise it would have taken a day each to fix oh. them. But with mending, you can fix both of them in one day. Uh -huh. You're going to need a woodworker to help you. Okay. Um, and to that end, uh, uh, Colvin, find someone to help you. He's busy uh, okay. coordinating things with the town council and stuff. But he finds another woodworker to give you a hand. Uh, and mm. the big thing is they go to find the bolts. And they open up the bolt cases. And they have bolts, but they're metal. So soaking them in holy water really isn't going to work. How um, they're 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 large metal bolts. Um, they're like they're like this long. I, I do have a question though, because I I had I had a plot kicking around in my head with one of the at least one of those ballistas, and I would want to work with you on modifying the bottom of one of them. A real simple modification. All right. That doesn't yeah. It probably would involve a, a, like a cart if we could just use a cart, something that has sure. wheels on it. Hmm. Because what I want to do. Oh, oh is, God. <laughs> what I want to do <laughs> is Hallgast would like to get at least a few volunteers from the townsfolk yeah. to put uh, this mount this ballista on a cart uh, sideways. All right. And so that um, and then put two areas where it can be pulled by rope by two townspeople very quickly. Like, left right. it, oh, but mostly only just left and right. OK. And what I want to do is I want to get a ballista. I'm going to put the ballista here between these two or somewhere around here yeah. that can be pulled out very quickly because I want to turn this entire bridge into like death alley. Oh, I want, I want, I, and I want, sure. I want something. So when they start crossing the bridge, we can surprise them by pulling this ballista out and shooting straight down this bridge All right. mm -hmm. with ballista bolts. Awesome. So uh, just mark on the map there with a B. That way we know that's where one of the ballistas is. Right. Where do you want to put the other one? So that is going to take your day making a modifiable ballista sure. that you can move around. This does mean that if, you know, uh, things get terrifying, you can try and drag it somewhere else, right. too. Um, so uh, where do you want to put the other one, though? Uh, 
Perhaps uh, it would be good to have uh, over in the north gate uh, or the west like gate. Like that, this or, area right or, here, maybe? Well, that's not a bad idea. Mm. Just in case, because then we have the water a, isn't going to stop the undead completely. But we also have a side, we also get a, a bit of a side angle on the, okay. uh, no, the, the other way. In that. If we can have it go turn, if we can have it sort of go. So generally side. speaking, a and ballista is pretty turn. easy to turn yeah. in mm -hmm. place, but it's hard to move. Right. That's we through buildings. Hit. Unless it's on a wagon. Unless we put it on the roof. Will the roof hold the ballista? No. No, 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 no. no, no. But, but you can, here, you can, is there a way to raise it? A lot of, yeah, exactly. It still well, that's the task yeah. that somebody could yeah. have is to yeah. build a oh, platform yeah. for yeah, the right ballista. There. Which is perfectly fine. You can get one of the woodworkers to work on that. All right. So that's where the other ballista is. All right. Uh, so that's that's half of you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, that's your first day. So that's the first day. Uh, who else has an idea? Um, I wanted to start collecting rocks and boulders is sort of like ammunition to use against them. In okay. We can somehow figure out how to make a makeshift uh, catapult. catapult. Gelby's like, I'm not sure we could build one of those in time, but uh, you know what we could do is we could load the rocks up in baskets and have them so that we can dump them over the walls if the, yeah. if the monsters get too close. That works. Sure. Let's go do that. A bunch of big rocks. All right. Gelby's like, I'm on it. And uh, you go and help uh, gather up uh, rocks and boulders and put them in baskets. And Gubby's like, that looks great. Uh, so uh, where do you want, uh, you can make enough uh, uh, baskets of rocks and boulders. You know what? I'm going to say to cover uh, three of the four gates. Um, okay, then I'll do the, the back three. The back three? So not the north gate? Not the north gate, because I feel like that's pretty covered. Okay. No? Yeah, it's up to you. Maybe. No, it's up yeah, to you. Yeah, don't doubt yourself. Yeah, no, you. That's that's fine. Yeah, okay, back three. It's good to have defenses everywhere. It's um, so uh, go ahead and just put uh, like ours, rocks. That's that's great. You have rocks near the gates. All right, let's go to this side of the table. Great. What uh, what are, what do the two of you want to do oh, to help? Can you mark? Can you write an R? Which one? Yeah. Oh, we're right here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, most of the towns people that aren't. I mean, once like. We're done working here. Yeah. Where are we going to have everybody sort of just... That's the battle plan you'll have to work out closer to the date. Right okay. now, defenses. Um, I mean, if, if you want, you could come up with a plan. That, that could be your plan to be like, get everyone to these locations. Like, you could set up a warning system. That would be useful to Well, them. that's what I was thinking, but also I wanted to, like, you know, protect the temple and then maybe have a few places where we are going to... You know, mostly static. like a last stand place. Yeah. Okay. And sort of craft something that's All like. Right. So, you know. do you want to build like like wooden barricades? Yes. All right. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because right. th this might actually help us if if we do have to flee south of the town. That's what I'm we saying. We just need to slow the undead. So down. you so you're building kind of a last stand location. Exactly. All right. You want to do that around the temple? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and just put a squiggly line all around the temple that indicates that that's where there are. And this is the, the kind of wooden barricades where you get you get logs and lash them together and sharpen the ends so that uh, you can't just charge through them. It becomes kind of a, 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 a spine wall that you There's can't There's also quite up. a bit there that Igilus wants to protect. Yeah, know, sure. Shillings. Absolutely. Stuff. Um, so we have that, and then, you know, we should find another location. Well, that's probably all you're going to be able to do in one day. That's okay. a lot. That's a lot of work to do. Uh, and last but not least, Omelette, what do you want to do on the first day? Okay, first day. Uh, going to rig that uh, bridge to blow for when, right. when, when we have to... Eventually, keep moving backwards. Mm -hmm. So slow them down. All right. So you go to the bridge, and uh, you're able to kind of climb around underneath it. Why don't you give me a? Why don't you give me an athletics check? Okay. Um. Twenty two. All right. So you uh, you get around underneath there and climb up underneath it, and you realize how what kind of bad condition this bridge is actually in. Excellent. I mean, it's it's holding up, but it wouldn't take much sawing to make it so that it's very fragile. Um, you could probably just have it rigged so that if a lot of weight got on it, it collapses. So if there were just a few monsters, they'd probably get across. But if like a horde of them was trying to cross at the same time, it'd probably collapse. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I definitely want to let the, the, the ballistics get a few rounds off on the bridge first. Mm -hmm. uh, so more of a one heavy weight is on That's a good it. idea okay. because um, it takes time to reload that ballista, and if we start yeah. getting overwhelmed, it might be just better to just pop the bridge. Yeah. Right. We can fire bullet. 
Yeah. Okay. Like and 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 yeah, a spell like that, like throwing a fireball at it, would also Good pretty much know. put an end to its Good structural to. integrity. Sure. All right. You may be somewhere else. And in- oh, true. So the townsfolk take it with grim news as the word begins to spread that the undead are approaching their town. They set to work with kind of dogged determination. These are skilled woodworkers and crafters. So when it comes to making barricades and making making reinforcements and things like that, they're very good at it. But as of right now, no one's fixed up any of the doors, just so you know. Uh, the doors are still kind of paper thin. Uh, uh, but you have put up a bunch of barricades, dropped a whole bunch of trees in the way, surrounded the, 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 the temple in additional barricades, and fixed both the ballistas. At the end of the first day, everyone's exhausted. But you know that there's more work to be done. The undead are still coming. So with that, we'll start day two. Liz, what do you got? Uh, I would like to work with Arnama. All right. Uh, to uh, start um, training up some of the troops. All right. Maybe giving them uh, some lessons because, of course, we're going to start a lot of with, with a lot of ranged attacks. So like getting people re-familiarized with their bows if they haven't used them in Absolutely. a while. Getting some of the hunters together and like really running them through their paces. Awesome. So you work with Arnama, and what I would like you to do is make me three attack rolls at your highest bonus. Just roll the die three times and tell me what you get. Okay. You don't even have to add. I know what your bonus is. Not that one. Come back. Oh, I have an 18, a 17, and an 11. That's all great. Uh, you and Arnama uh, start drilling some of the townsfolk in archery exercises, trying to get their, their draw and their fire speed up so that they can fire more and more arrows. Arnama... Uh, helps you do this and also <coughs> breaks out a supply of blunt arrows. They're arrows whose tips are kind of these, uh, they're small bags filled with like stones. The arrows don't fly nearly as far, but they do deal bludgeoning damage nice. instead. She's like, we run into any more of those skeletons. Can I have a few <coughs> of those for myself? She gives, you, she, she gives you, she has two quivers for the party, so there's 10, ten 10 blunt arrows in each one of those. So two people get 10 blunt arrows each. For you and one for me. Uh, She also distributes a handful of them out to all of the all of the people you're training. You now have an entire squad of archers. Where would you like the squad of archers positioned? Uh, I would like to go ahead. In an emergency. They're not uh, just standing there all day. Uh, (laughs) Obviously, we are going to start off with them uh, on the north wall. Uh, in then uh, and some on the west wall, since those are the two places that we've definitely seen right. them come. Well, you have one good squad of archers, so put them up near the north wall. The north wall, then. yeah. Yes. So, so just write archers and put them first, inside, yes, like in our first in li- inside. No, no, inside. Oh, inside. Inside. oh okay. they, yeah, no. Let's not put the archers and your artillery outside the wall. I mean, oh, who would that. who would do that? <laughs> right now, they anyway, will, they will uh, never see that coming. It will be our first line of defense. In the event that they get past the, uh, the difference. <laughs> Who would make that kind of bad decision? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, are we doing any here? Uh, or all just, too easy. Just, no, all right. It's all, all up there. So, <laughs> who else has some ideas about how to fortify the They've bridge? been warned about the bridge. Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually have a couple of questions. So, sure. for Sir Falmer and <clears throat> um, Father Prast, yeah. I want to gather them and as many acolytes as possible and see how many of them can make healing potions, no healing spells, uh, and then how many uh, in no cantrips like Disrupt Undead or Divine Lance, and if not, if I could. So as priests, right, every day you can swap out your spells. Yeah. So uh, clerics can do that every day. So all every one of them is loaded with healing spells mm-hmm. and they all have Disrupt Undead prepared. Okay. So, uh, but, so th- that isn't even going to cost you your day. They just, the moment they heard the news, they were <clears> like, <throat> okay, yeah, that's what I'm preparing. Yeah. Now, they're not high-level clerics. Um, uh, you get the idea that Sir Sir Falmer is kind of high-level, but he's also, um, he's, he's pretty infirm. What is um, that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> He's old. That said, Sir Falmer is still more than willing to fight, and he is prepared for battle. So, um, uh, who else has something they would like to do? I'll help fortify the, the gates. The gates? Yeah. All right. So, uh, Gelby's there. Yeah, let's let's do that. That sounds like a good idea. Otherwise, they're just going to punch right through those. Yep. Um, do you have a craft at all? I do. Oh, awesome. Go ahead and give me a craft skill check. <clears throat> Give me a number. That's not a number I want, but mm. 
Uh, 16. 16. All right. Uh, you work throughout the day, and uh, you are able to uh, help fortify one of the gates. Cool. I have a better idea for what I'm going to do. Which gate? Which one? Uh, let's do the, uh, the west gate. Here? Yep. So just draw a really solid line there at the at the gate. Yeah. That the gate is now really firmly secured. All right. Um, since I didn't, that didn't do very much. Yeah, sure. Um, I closer to the time, I'm going to go out towards the north. Yeah. With someone, so I'm not alone, sure. and place an alarm. Okay. So just to give you a have, heads up. Yeah. yeah sure. At least right. like. We also have that twenty minute warning. Okay. Uh, yeah, that gives you an, a warning. You can also work to fortify gates and stuff like that. Yeah, today I would if you definitely want. Yeah. And, like. All right. Barricade. Uh, go ahead and give me a, a craft check. Even if you don't have it, just go ahead and roll a, an intelligence check. An intelligence check? Yeah. Okay. Craft is intelligence. Yeah, having hunters on the lookout is probably a good idea. Okay. Over here, what are what are you all up to? I have an idea. How smart are the undead? Depends on the undead. Hold on just a sec. What did you get? It's just an eight. An eight? That's still enough to fortify a gate. Like, uh, e e e as long as you spend a day doing it, you mm -hmm. can fortify a gate. Which gate do you want to fortify? This one. Since we've got rocks, but nothing else. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Awesome. All right. <laughs> that works great. Okay. Ooh. So, uh, how smart are the undead? Not very. Okay. But but some of them can be smart. Like those ghouls and gas seem very smart. Could we rig up like um, night like 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 decoy knights or decoy you you could know, try. people yeah. and have those like maybe set up up here and then rig them with the holy water bomb or something like that? Uh you could. That might that might be pretty tricky. You're not sure if Undead would fall for that. Like Claymore's just kind of Yeah, like a, like a like a holy mother Claymore. Uh, when you when you suggest that to Gelby, he's like, "Yeah, we I mean, we could um we could also uh like uh get uh like buckets and stuff we could throw them at it, uh, right? I mean, like when they get up to the gate, we could dump holy water on them." Mm. That mm. gives me an idea. That's 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 okay. Um, so we just over the. Yeah, I mean we could we could do that. I mean we could also try and rig some up in the trees out there where like I like that idea. idea. I like, like that idea. you could we could maybe make holy water snares where like if they step on the snare like the the bomb like comes flying fly out of them. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it it flies them up into the tree. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. All right, let's build some of those. That sounds great. Okay. Uh, I know some people who are really good at making snares. So let's do that. Gelby's. I'll go find him. <laughs> uh, how many can we do? Let's see. One uh, you can easily fortify one one path. And what I'm saying is basically you're just kind of adding a whole bunch of lures out to one <coughs> pathway into town. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do the north, you can do the north, and that'll catch a whole bunch of whole bunch of bad guys. Um, you do the east, you do the west, you do the south. If they're coming, we already have. Yeah, we're not entirely sure. Well, you have a you have a bunch of dead fall up that way, mm -hmm. and you you have a gate that hasn't been fortified in that direction. All right, so that's where we'll do it. All right. Uh, so just write snares up that way. Right here? Yep. Okay. Uh, who else has an idea? I, oh, uh, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah. yeah. What, what are you... I was going to gather the farmers and... <coughs> do that the, thing. The beach, yeah. So what, Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah, go ahead, because I'm, I'm going to be listening in to sure. this. Sure, sort of like going and on, like, yeah. I'm getting ideas all day of just like... <laughs> Your morning breakfast, you're all chatting, yeah. and I'm getting ideas. Yeah. All right, so what so, do you got for me? So Holgast is going to coordinate with the farmers and get all of the farming equipments, the plows and the hose and the, and the, and the rakes, everything, just like get them all together and spend the entire afternoon dragging the beach to muddy up and, and damage the, the, the banks. Oh, okay, making possible. it really hard for them to yeah, get out. Yeah, I want to I wanna, I wanna turn, the goal is to turn everything inside that wall into difficult terrain if you're cut, because I'm anticipating the undead walking into the water and then walking out the other side. So right. I, wanted, I wanted to, to make it as it, it's time consuming as possible. So most of the low skilled uh, folks in town who aren't really good at making weapons or anything like that, right. they, they all come out to help and they turn the entire South Beach into just a muddy morass in Excellent. one afternoon. Um, in fact, many of them take their old farm implements and stuff too and just jam, just jam them, them in, in, the the, in the ground to make it even harder to get across. Uh, you don't really have to mark it. I'm just going to keep that in mind that the entire southern bank. Yeah, because otherwise yeah. it's going to be everywhere. <laughs> all right. So the southern banquet's all all secured. Lastly, omelets, what are you doing? Okay, so I'm seeing holy water bombs and traps and snares and mud. And I'm like, let's 
mush them together. <laughs> so I want to make like holy water mud trap. Okay. Uh, so like in this bit, this is this is the inevitable also like run away. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. The 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 if we have to get away, trap it like we as many ways to buy us time as possible. Um, make this a sort of trap. So what you can do is you can dig a bit of a trench there. Yeah. And whether or not you want to fill it with oil and throw fire in there, or whether or not at the last minute you want to dump holy water in there, because sure. if you dump holy water in there now, it's not going to be holy by the time they show up. But you can dig a trench through the middle. Okay. And at least make it so that when the time comes, you can throw stuff in there, whatever you feel like, to make it more dangerous. And at the very least, it's a trench that they have to get across or sure. go around. So go ahead and draw a trench right through the middle there. Um, that's great. All right, so you all spend uh, a lengthy back-breaking day working on traps, digging trenches, fortifying the beach, doing whatever it takes to try and prepare this town. And as night falls, the townsfolk are exhausted. But alongside that exhaustion, they're also very afraid. The folk are not looking forward to this night. According to our Nama, the undead are coming. And as night falls, the townsfolk know that they may not see the dawn. Slowly, the night settles in on the town. All is quiet. No one is sleeping. The Seven Silvers is closed. Everyone is holding their breath. And at around... 10 o'clock, just as the moon begins to rise up over the trees. Your alarm goes off. <laughs> the undead are coming. <laughs> and that is where we are going to end today's adventure. <laughs> I want to thank you all for watching and encourage you to tune in next week for another exciting episode. <laughs> If you've enjoyed what you've seen today, you can learn more about the game at PathfinderSecondEdition.com. The core rulebook, Bestiary, and several adventures and accessories are available now from Paizo.com and your favorite local game store. If you, are, if you want to catch more of my adventures, you can find me every Thursday uh, running the Oblivion Oath, a Pathfinder office campaign uh, on the Paizo Twitch channel at twitch.tv backslash official Paizo. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and we will see you next time.